Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Welcome to the New Year shuttle from Berlin to Frankfurt and then back towards Berlin time permitting. But we do have four hours available so that should work out fine. First question I have to ask you guys is if, you are, if we are going to use FS2 crew or not because opinions seem to be really split when I asked by text it was 50-50 for yes and no. So we kind of have to make up our opinion on that. For the rest of the time though, welcome to the Abilene Boeing 737-800 in the uh, good old Abilene new colors. I was really split if I should take the new or should take the old colors, but I opted for the new ones at the end of the day. Let's head right into the flight deck, and um, before we're going to start this live stream, let us actually configure this aircraft. So, Abilene used some pretty new equipment on their latest aircraft, however, they also had a little bit of a mixture installed. So, we'll start definitely Collins heading select. It is actually going to be a fail operational autoland today. So, we do have the um, third button on the MFD available. From that, we probably take all the D rates that we can have. Company cost NX is only going to be 8. They did run out of money after all. Now for all the callouts we can take the standard stuff over here. I'll just configure that to my likings. Etops, yep, why not? And default transition 5000. Off we go towards um, the FMC. They do have a couple of fixed pages on board. And Performance improvement, yes. Short field, yes. Auto pro beat, yes. And I do believe they used carbon brakes, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, and they did have the original lights on this particular aircraft. New pressurization panel, and yes to the window shades. Leading us on to the displays. We will take the PFD ND style layout, even though Air Berlin did have EFIS map as well. I will do a live stream using EFIS map eventually, by the way, but I can't tell you exactly when that is going to be yet. And the rest of the stuff looks pretty good over here. View our course lines, no, hate them. And oil in quads. And finally, we. Yeah, we take all the lovely fancy stuff here. And that should be our aircraft configured. So let's have a look into the comments then. And um, okay, comments are a little bit uh, split, but I'm going to do it myself today. So no FS2 crew on this one. The only one thing I do have to do, as I have been playing around with a couple of aircraft, is go back into the uh, camera settings and reset my zoom to 50%. Because depending on the aircraft I fly, I um, do put that back and forth. For the Phoenix I use 70, for the A310 I use uh, 60, and 50 for the um, 737, which is the standard value as well. Okay, so we are going to do things ourselves then. In that case... Get rid of the stairs, as we are going to use the jetway, and request that jetway as well, please. So, battery on, power on. Okay. So next up, let's uh, do a quick review of our flight plan and check what we are going to um, do. Uh, Metal Eye, unfortunately I cannot comment on the EFB at the moment. So, 
1st January 2023, Berlin to Frankfurt, OFP number 3, on the Alpha Bravo Bravo Golf, which is what we are sitting in. Flat hull 240, planned cruise level today, and um, 6.2 tons is planned. Let's have a look into the weather. So Frankfurt is showing Cafe K. They do get a little bit of rain tomorrow noon. And here in Berlin, some gusts forecast, but becoming wind calm, and that is what we do seem to have. Altmut Düsseldorf, some light rain, few clouds, and some gusts over the night, but that's all that there is. So overall, I would say we can go with the standard fuel here, because the company has been so generous to allow 10 extra minutes already as additional reserve. So 8.3, and we should be fine. So 8.3 it is. I'm going to use PMDG's ground services here. Makes life a little bit easier. So we'll start off with a reasonable amount of fuel that we might have had when the aircraft arrives. Get rid of all that and then we'll use the PMDG ground services. Request a fuel truck and 6,300 kilograms. Also for the boarding Plant at 164, and uh, we'll have 300 kilos in the front hold. That should be pretty much all we'll need for today. Okay, so with that completed, let's uh, go ahead and actually start to do something for our flight. Very first thing. Complete those safety checks and it's incredible how different the different SOPs can actually be. Like up here in uh, my airline we use such a different uh, set of standard procedures than FS2 crew and um, I actually noticed when I used FS2 crew for a bit and tried to learn the voice procedures how much it actually um, distracted me from my operator's SOPs. So I'm a little bit uncertain at the moment whether I should continue to learn the voice version of FS2 Crew because it really somewhat confused me when flying the real airplane and that is of course something that must under no circumstances at all be allowed to happen. But that's just a little anecdote here. I'm gonna Probably tell a little bit more about that as we go in flight. For the moment though, let's actually go ahead and um, start a little bit of a setup here. And Kaysan, voice gone. Anybody else who uh, got voice problems here? Okay, doesn't look like it. That is good. Okay, um, quick look then into the load sheet. 167 passengers. And as said, we're going to take 300... Um, kilos of fuel, uh, sorry, 300 kilos of cargo, 167, we'll take that. Oh. Right, fuel truck is here, they can start refueling. In the meantime, there is no ATC online in um, Berlin quite yet, so as of right now, we can only guess. Oh boy, enough data out of date. I forgot to update them. Valid until 29th December. Okay. So we just got to very carefully um, check our routing, and the SID and STAR are in compliance with the um, charts as we are going to fly along. Okay, we are in Berlin. We'll take the GPS position. Request flight plan to Frankfurt. Select. And we are going to be the 
Aberlin 771 Juliet. For the rest of it, just wait a second until the um, route is uplinked. To my knowledge, Aberlin did use some of those uplink features. Even though I don't know exactly um, which they used and which they didn't, but should be fine. So, uh, runway 25 left for the departure on the lock door 1 November. And for the arrival, let's initially plan the ILS Yankee 25 right and Kerax 3 Alpha arrival with the Delta Fox 426 transition. Activate Cosmex X8. As said, no money. To my knowledge, 8 was the latest cost index that Evelyn used before they went bankrupt. So, that is what we will do as well then. And I don't mean going bankrupt with that. Okay, so 255 at 68 is going to be our uh, top of climb wind with a temperature 1 degree warmer than IKO standard. Why did I enter 5000? Come on, 240. Better. Okay, that's much better. So, let's go ahead and see about our engine out departure. Um, once again, we are going to use the virtual performance tool, which is something that I do really like. And just like in real life, we would get our engine out sit from the... Um, performance tool, so let's go ahead and pre-program that. So we're in Berlin, runway 25 left, and down here it is. Climb on 245 degrees to enter non-published holding at 15 DME, radio 246 from BBI. Okay. So let's do that. Um, BBI 246 slash 15 and we can also put that at the end of the root page. And then just enter anything before that, so that we get the discontinuity. Delete, remove, and now we have the discount in here. Holding. And now, let's see, the holding is um, 246 in mount, left turns, MSA 2400. So 246 slash left, and then 24 is the MSA, so let's take 3000 for the holding. Okay, tells us we can't enter that due to an altitude constraint. The real airplane wouldn't do that, so might have to file a bug report there. What if we take 3000 above? Yeah, that works. Perfect. And then we can change the ring in here to around the airport and can draw a 25 mile ring. So now it looks like this on the navigation display. We see that any better? Yeah, a little bit. Like now it looks like this. We just fly straight at, enter the holding over here and climb into 3,000 feet for the emergencies. And you would see a lot more if I removed that from view. So here you have it. Um, straight ahead into the holding over there. You just gotta be a little bit careful if the airplane actually enters the holding because there was a bug in the real aircraft that um, made it impossible for LNAV to capture a holding if you pre-inserted that at the end of the lax page like I just did. So. Got to be a little bit careful with that, but it does make your life easier if you do it this way. Okay, the rest of it we're going to uplink as we get there. So let's go ahead and do the rest of the flight deck setup. Your damper on, now chance to display switch is normal auto. Fuel, any pump goes on that has um, fuel in it. Then we can start our boarding in the meantime. 6.3 tons are on board, so the fueler can go. And... You guys can open the door. 
and start the embarkation. At the same time, you guys can start loading the cargo as well. So, flight level 240, Frankfurt is at 350 feet, do have maintenance over here. Flight directors on, initial climb I believe is 4000, but we'll look at the chart in a few moments anyway. We'll see about the radios and the frequencies. I'm only gonna tune that stuff once the uh, VATSIM ATC is online. Okay, so. What else do we have to do then? Well, we can have a look into the charts. Go on Navigraph, you may import the flight, Berlin to Frankfurt. Just go ahead and synchronize the charts for me, makes life easier. But then we'll also still need the taxi charts. So, lock door 1 November, initial climb clearance 5000 feet. We want to pre-select that. And I believe that should pretty much be it. Okay, so um, let's go for the departure briefing then. Threats for the departure. It's going to be quite busy. And in case we do get a departure from the northern runway, which I do, sorry, from the southern runway, which I do somewhat expect, there is some um, misnaming of the taxiways in the scenery. So a couple of the holding points have different names on the signs than what they actually have in real life. Most importantly up here, Mike 7 is called Mike 8, I believe. So um, we'll mitigate against that by using the charts all the way as reference for the taxi. And we use the taxi signs in the scenery only as a secondary reference. So um, let's try to avoid any possible confusion that could come up over there. Apart from that, I don't really have... Um, I don't really have any threats for the departure. Then let's do a route check. Here we go, that's what I tried to do. Okay. Echo Delta Delta Bravo towards Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot, Bravo Echo Romeo 771 Juliet. And for the routing, here it is. It's via Lockdo, Zulu 20 Autark, Tango 177 ODP, Tango 157 Kerax, Kerax Arrival. Ground distance is um, 293 versus 300, 4.1 remaining, and we need 2.6 for a diversion towards. Düsseldorf. Okay. So far, so good. Then, um, instrument cross check. This is going to be a left seat takeoff from runway 25 left. Flaps will be 5. Noise abatement procedure number 1 here in Berlin. Um, UTC time 10.26, altimeter 1018, reading 150, MFRA is going to be 1150, standby instruments are set, flight directors are on, and the master side is on my side. Let's see, takeoff 25 left, flaps 1, uh, sorry, flaps 5, noise abatement 1, and the um, EO sits straight at 15 miles from BBI, and I've set that one active at the end of the flight plan page already. Here we have it. Climbing 3000, MSA 2400 in the sector. 
If the call, uh, sorry, above 80 knots, I will only reject the takeoff for fire or fire warning, engine failure, predictive windshield warning, aircraft is unable or unsafe to fly. If I call stop, I'll simultaneously close the thrust lever, disengage the auto throttle, apply maximum manual braking, and verify operation of the RTO auto brakes. I will manually raise the speed brake lever, apply maximum reverse thrust, and when the aircraft comes to stop, I will set the parking brake. Now, from the FO's point of view. If you call stop, I will note the brakes on speed and call speed brakes up or speed brakes not up and thrust reverse normal or abnormal indications. I'll call 100 knots, 80 knots, 6 knots and the wrong distance remaining. I verify your actions and call your emissions. I will call auto brake disarm and select flap 40 when the parking brake has been set and advise ADC of the reject. We then identify the failure and carry out any as appropriate. If we decide to evacuate, we read into the evacuation checklist. Time permitting, we'll pull the CBRCB. You grab the lid, then we get out. And if the call before we want us keep going, no actions below 400 feet except to cancel any warnings and raise the landing gear with a positive rate. At 400 feet, verify heading select and carry out the memory items. At the MFRA, we are going to buck up and retract the flaps and schedule. Flaps up no light, select level change, max continue thrust, engage the automatics, non-normal checklist, normal checklist, IOC, NITS, PA, and then we decide on the further course of action. Okay, um, for the taxi, it is going to be a pushback. I do expect to the right-hand side, but we are going to see about that. Um, I expect the departure on me to have left, so that will be the right indeed. Standing here on Bravo 10, so probably onto Victor 2. Then taxi straight ahead towards entry south. And then either straight ahead Victor 2, Mike 7. Or via Bravo and Mike 8. We will definitely take Mike 7 figures for our performance tool. The departure then is up here, locked door 1 November departure. Transition altitude 5000 feet versus in the FMC. We have 5001 feet and also in the FMC, runway 25 left, locked door 1 November departure. Then, um, simultaneous parallel departures in progress, pilots have to proceed exactly on extended center line until starting turns as published in the departure routes, and shall remain on tower frequency until further advised. Connect Brim radar when advised by tower, and that's going to be 120.630. Uh, sets are also minimum noise routing, strict adherence within limits of aircraft performance is mandatory, and warning, close and obstacles exist. MSA 2400. Now let's have a look into the route. We climb straight ahead to an altitude of uh, 600 feet. And then Delta Bravo 260, left turn 225, 7.5 miles, Delta Bravo 263. Um, got the stop altitude of 5000 in here and we'll do the initial turn with the flaps out anyway, so I'm not going to insert any further speed restriction. Thereafter, it's going to be a right turn, 244, 12.6 miles towards Lulu. That's down here. Then 254, 10.8 Isika. And then 253, 13.3 towards Lokdo. It's an Arnav departure, so in case we lose Arnav capability, we are going to um, proceed with a left turn onto a heading of 225 degrees in order not to accidentally cross the extended runway center line. And then we'll call our traffic control and uh, request radar vectors. I'm setting the Berlin Brandenburg VOR active in both radios here. There is no nav aids associated with the departure, so I'll just take something close by. Do you have any questions, comments or concerns? Probably not. That is very good. So, um, safety inspection checklist and before start checklist down to the line. Services and trucks checked. Maintenance status checked. Battery on electric hydraulic pumps, on landing gear lever, down ship's library, checked. IRS mode selectors, here they are, navigating, gear pins, one to three, removed, probe covers, one to three, four, five, removed, light test, always forget the light test in the sim, but who knows what it's good for, because that means I miss that the PAX lights are currently inoperative. Okay, light test checked, oxygen test 100%, your damper on, nav transfer and display switches, normal and auto, fuel 6 2 required, 6 3 on board, and 4 pumps on. Cabin utility IFE on, emergency exit lights, armed, fast melts on, window heat on, air con and press, packs auto, bleeds on, set, pressurization mode selector, auto, instruments, cross checked, auto brakes, RTO, hydraulics, normal. Speed brake, down attend, parking brake, set, step to cutter switches, normal, wheel will fire warning, checked, radius, radar and transponder, set and standby, rudder and aileron trims, 
3 and 0 takeoff briefing, discussed, PA, to go. So that's the checklist complete so far. Let's see if ATC is online by now so that we can get a clearance and indeed they are 121.6. One Alpha current startup cleared Frankfurt locked door one November departure flight plan route climb 5000 feet squawk 1000. What's on the pipe out there? Whiskey 30 frames by the other one November departure and climbing initially 5000 feet squawk 1000 information alpha current. Sansa 5 photo whiskey read back correct report ready for startup. Hello and delivery good evening Evelyn 771 Juliet information alpha request clearance to Frankfurt. Evelyn 771 Juliet, Berlin Delivery, hello, information alpha is correct, startup approved, cleared Frankfurt, lock door 1, November departure, flight plan route, climb 5000 feet, squawk 1000. Evelyn 771 Juliet, cleared Frankfurt, lock door 1, November departure, flight plan route, climb asset 5000, squawk 1000, startup approved. Evelyn 771 Juliet, negative startup not approved, report ready for startup and read back correct. Startup cancelled, will go Evelyn 771 Juliet. He said startup approved at first. He definitely said it, but anyway, doesn't matter. Probably his mistake. Okay, so Squawk 1000, um, 5000 feet, and we have 25 left, Locked Door 1 November departure. So that stuff is complete. Let's see how our boarding is going. 167 on board, perfect. Then start the APU. So let's have another look into the um, performance tool. So, oh, Berlin, 25 left, mic 7 figures, dry runway, uh, 220 at 9, and then we have a temperature of 131018. By the way, lovely temperatures here for um, the 1st of January. We're going to fly towards Frankfurt. Runway 25 right, I suppose. 5% dry as well. 120 at 4, temperature 121018. We'll calculate a flap 40 landing. Let's see what that gives us. It's actually slightly limited landing weight. Okay. That's still fine. Should be well within that. So, um, catering. We have a winter catering on board with nil duty free. Let's see, 167 passengers. So we'll take it straight from here. No clue how they're seated. Um, let's just make something up, really. 25, 130, uh, and then we need another 22. Is that right? No, that's not right. Well, that's better. Cargo, we have in hold two 300 kilograms. And fuel, 6,300. Uh, trip fuel is... 2757 and the taxi fuel 227. Okay, might have to redistribute those passengers. Let's do 12 here and 25 in the back. 130. Okay, that's better. So, zero fuel weight is uh, 65, uh, sorry, 56.5. That's what I meant to say. And that is actually exactly according to the flight plan. It gives us a gross weight of 62.9, and we have 62.8 in here. Can execute that. Then takeoff data, calculate 22k at 46 degrees. Okay, I would say there is no reason not to take that, so let's go ahead. 22k and 46 degrees, 88.0 against 87.2, that's because the APU is not running yet. So that makes sense. Flat 5 takeoff, I'll take the CG right from the simulator. Takeoff speeds 139, 139, 143, and we'll take 139, 139, 142 from the um, FMS. So, MFRA 11.56. Let's proceed with that.
1156. Uh, the app, by the way, is called Virtual Performance Tool, and it's a very, very accurate replica of the real-life Boeing Performance Tool. I'm absolutely in love with that, because it is so close to the real one. Exactly what we use at work every day. So, the ground cars can disconnect pretty much everything. Okay, and six units of trim, and then we are done. Let's call ATC to get a startup clearance. Why is the jetway not gone yet? Abilene 771 Juliet, request startup. Stand by. Jetway going now. Abilene 322 to startup approved for pushback contact apron 1 to 1, that's an 850. Yeah, the jetway is going. The other stations calling, go again, one by one. Abilene 771 Juliet, request startup. Evelyn 771 Juliet expects startup on 748 Zulu. Stand by. Evelyn 771 Juliet, Roger. Uh, and there they start Roger, slotting Roger, again. Okay, 1748. I don't understand why they start giving out slots only when you call for startup. Because that is exactly how it's not supposed to go. Because now we are sitting here on the gate, waiting. We are wasting fuel on the APU, because uh, previously we had no idea. And only in the moment where we've been fully ready, they tell us that we need to wait. Like, why can't they tell us earlier, when our TZAT is, target startup approval time, TZAT. Why can't they tell us earlier, when the TZAT is, so that we can actually prepare ourselves in accordance. That is something I don't understand why they right do that on that side. Anyway, um, and now we have to listen to all his IFR clearances as well. So that's a little bit annoying. Okay, um, in the meantime, let's finish up the checklist and then we can still decide on what we are going to do further. And at that moment, I'll also give you guys the uh, sounds from the simulator. So, um... Abilene 771 Juliet, startup approved for pushback contact apron 1-1-1-8-5-0. Abilene 771 Juliet, startup approved 1-1-1-8-5-0. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Okay, that was quick. They probably listened to the live stream. <laughs> well, if they did, thank you very much, guys. Um, so, let's uh, call them for pushback. Berlin Ground, hello, Air Berlin 771 Juliet, stand Bravo 10, request pushback. Air Berlin 771 Juliet, Berlin Ground, hello, pushback approved, face south. Pushback approved, face south, Air Berlin 771 Juliet. So, rest of the checklist. Um, PA complete, yeah, FMC CDU set, M1 S box, automatic, reduce 22k, speeds 393942 set. Stop trim, 6.2 set. Performance at balance and send, phones off, EFD, airplane mode stowed, flight windows cockpit door, locked, doors closed, passengers seated, air compacts off, anti collision light on, parking brake set, transponder out off before start checklist complete. Okay, GSX, nose to the right. Brakes off. Okay, off block 41. Call you for the push. Perfect 
Yeah, that looks interesting here. Bye-bye. Is he at least gonna stop eventually? Bye-bye. Okay, we clear the roads and everything. Let's go ahead and uh, start engine number two. And two. All pressure. And one. Monitor 2, starting 1. Fragment Group uh, 0, Wings 90041 on my own Alpha. 90041, hello. 62 Gates, Delta 19er via Victor 1. And 2, Gate all pressure. Delta, one nine and 1. I'm looking here. First, uh, B9 Trijot Zulu, taxi Victor 2, hold short of Bravo. Victor 2, short of Bravo, Trijot Zulu. Tow truck, he's connected. Fighters being removed. Lufthansa 7 Mike Delta, hello. Right is clear, right is clear. Okay. Data cutout, monitor one. Red needle is gone, engine number one stable. They are going very good. Design 32 Zulu contact, ground 1 to 1, dismissive. Ground and 1 to 1, dismissive. Design 32 Zulu, salam. So, flight control track, full up. Full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, left, right, neutral before taxi checklist. Generators on, APU off, start switches continues, probe heat on, anti ice off, air conditioning, packs auto, bleeds on, isolation off, auto, flaps, five required, five selected, and a green light. Step trim, 6.2 set. Start leave with idle attempt, fly controls checked, recall checked before taxi checklist complete. Negative. And now swing on to Victor 1. The after 2, back to Victor 2, via Victor 2, version of Charlie. Bravo, sorry. Come on, do your read back. We want to go as well. Victor 1, Tom Victor, Charlie, and Bravo, and one by four, Victor. Abilene 771 Juliet, big best taxi. Abilene 771 Juliet, taxi Victor 2, hold up, Bravo. Victor 2, hold up, Bravo, Abilene 771 Juliet. Okay, that is initially Abilene just Abilene straight ahead. Brakes off, clear left. Clear right, config. So we go straight ahead and uh, hold drop Bravo, which is pretty much entry south as briefed. Victor, you can continue on Victor 2 now, not straight over. Auto Victor, Taxi Victor 2. you are uh, number 3 behind the Lufthansa, left of you. Bravo 1 1, 
Four nine two, I call you. First, Evelyn seven seven one Juliet, contact the ground one two one seven. One two one seven, Evelyn seven seven one Juliet, happy new year. Ah, Los Angeles. Ground hello, Evelyn seven seven one Juliet. Evelyn seven seven one Juliet, calling ground. Good evening, taxi to holding point one way two five left via Victor two and Mike seven. Thanks, you're on a .25 left, Victor 2, Mike 7, Abilene 771, Juliet. Okay, that is as briefed, simply straight ahead and then onto that rapid exit taxiway over there. So, clear right, clear left, before takeoff checklist down to the line. Config? Abilene 771, Juliet, contact tower 118, Desmond 8, schönen Abend. 118, Desmond 8, Abilene 771, Juliet, schönen Abend und frohes Neues. Danke. Berlin Tram. Okay, so master caution, once again those bloody overwing exits. Okay, so config, check, flaps, 5, 5, green light, step trim, 6.2, set, takeoff briefing. It's going to be a lefty takeoff on runway 25 left, flaps, 5, noise abatement procedure number 1, um, takeoff speeds 139, 139, 142. And the sit straight at 600 feet, left turn out. And for the emergencies, we go straight at 15 miles, climbing 3000, enter the hold over there, 246, left turns. Any questions? No? Cabin, secured, down to the line. Berlin Tower, good Abend, Herr Berlin, 771 Juliet at Mike 7, ready for departure. Herr Berlin, 771 Juliet, Berlin Tower, good evening, traffic, look under FC 20, short final, or make you find that, before traffic in five. Evelyn 771 Juliet will go. Okay. Can't see him from here. Officially on a rapid exit taxiway, he can't ask us that because we just have no way of seeing that aircraft. So we'll just wait until he passes us. Or we'll cheat and do this. And there he is. I really missed seeing this livery. It's been five years now that Abilene is uh, bankrupt. And still, the livery really has its charm. Okay, let's see what kind of a landing that guy is gonna do there. That was alright. That was definitely alright. Abilene 771 Juliet, traffic inside. Abilene 771 Juliet, giant left traffic, climb from where you find left behind. At the traffic line, 25 left behind, Abilene 771 Juliet. Cabin crew, please take your seats for departure. Okay. Before takeoff checklist below the line, MCP, set, transponder, TARA, strobe lights. I knew there was something in this, but I wasn't sure what. Okay, strobe lights on, holding at landing lights. Blocked. Have left, left for takeoff, have been seven, seven, one, Juliet. Okay, land lights on, before takeoff checks complete, timing, set takeoff thrust. Take a first set, indications normal. 80 knots. B1, rotate. Behind the uh, behind our private traffic line up to five left uh, behind the other way. Europe, positive rate. 
Ja, nu är det. On to zero, that's more 6 to 5, Fabuline 771, Juliet, bye bye. Backup. Bremen, schönen guten Abend, Herr Berlin, 771 Juliet, passing 3400, climbing 5000, slot door 1 November. Flaps 1. You check, flap 1. Climb 5160, Herr Berlin, 771 Juliet. Set. 160 checked. Okay, set standard. Flaps up. Speed check flaps up. So, due to noise abatement, they don't want us to use full climb thrust below level 100 here in Berlin. So, we will comply with that. Flaps up, no lights. Clean up. After takeoff checklist. Cabin is released. Air condition and pressurization 2.0 climbing and set. Altimeters standard 47 climbing 160. After takeoff check is complete. And we're above the MSA, the standby altimeter can go to standard as well. So I'll hand fly this a little bit more. In real life, I usually hand fly at least until above flight level 100. So going to do the same thing here in the simulator. Of course, while we're hand flying the aircraft, there is uh, no talking going on except for what is operationally necessary. So that's why I'm a little bit more quiet at the moment. As soon as the autopilot is on, I am going to answer uh, all the questions that I missed in the meantime in the live chat of the um, stream there. Okay, altimeters, passing 100, climbing 160, 10 tracks. Um, I'll do the 10 tracks first, then I'll accelerate the plane. So, fuel is balanced with four pumps on, the lights are going off, APU off, air conditioning pressurization 4.2, climbing set. Fast melts auto, recall checked, 1 to 1.5. Monitoring 10 tracks complete. Then let's go full climb thrust. Evelyn seven seven one Juliet contact Bremen one three six decimal four five zero five. One three six decimal four five Evelyn seven seven one Juliet choose. Oh, three six four five. Here, actually, Radar, schönen guten Abend, frohes neues Jahr, Air Berlin, 771 Juliet, passing level 123, climbing 160 in Mount Lulo. Berlin, 771 Juliet, Bremen, hallo, identified, climb 2000. 
Climb to 4-0, oh, ja, aber Ihnen 7 7 Juliet. Set. 2 4 0 checked. Wiener. Okay, and then we have Flutter 2 4 0 set once. Twice. 7 7 1 Juliet, I cannot. Okay, Kerak, 7 7 1 Juliet. And set three times. So, direct to Kerak. Let's check, execute. Elnaf available. Elnaf. So this would be a typical point where I would turn on the autopilot in real life, but I don't know why I'm currently in the mood for hand flying, so I'm just gonna keep it on a little bit more. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to keep it off a little bit more. That's what I meant to say. Alright, um... Now, finally. Going straight, going level. Well, almost level, but going straight. So, um, time to answer a couple of you guys' questions. Um, I'll start backwards first. So, Vipers Racing Monos, can you tell me why my PMDG after four waypoints does not follow the uh, flight plan, even if we set everything correct from Simbrief? Well, most likely your aircraft is not able to um, either follow the route because the turns are too tight, that would be one possibility, or the other possibility that I would probably suspect um, to be more the cases that you have any of the assists on in um, Microsoft Flight Simulator because those assists can really mess your aircraft over. That would be my primary um, my primary idea there. Goodwin, um, question, usually there is uh, ILS, X-Ray, Zulu, Yankee, whatever. What is the meaning of this difference? Um, it's different procedures, so you will notice that the they either have different missed approaches or different initial approaches or different um, or different glide slopes. That is all the um, possibilities that you have there. So mostly it's different missed approaches in Europe, but it might also be different initial approaches and so on. Little wind shift. Okay, so auto throttle off, 2,000 feet a minute. I always love this challenge. Um, when you're approaching the level of altitude, to fly the vertical speed as accurately as possible, following the 3 to 1 rule, while also keeping the speed. So now we're approaching 1 to go, let's do 1,000 feet a minute. To go. Keeping the airplane in trim, of course, is important. But at the same time, maintaining um, your speed, of course, is important as well. So that's always the challenge that we have on this. And I would say this looks quite good. By the way, this is um, only my second flight using the Honeycomb Bravo throttle, and I really have to say I really fall in love with them. Um, the landing gear lever is really nice. The ability to choose between all the different thrust levers is uh, really nice as well. And most importantly, I can set my thrust quite accurate. So it's not as accurate yet as I would love it to be, but um, it is getting really, really good. Okay, and we're up in cruise level. By the way, did you guys hear that on the radio? That pilot read back to proceed to Delta Bravo 463. 
And then later on when ATC asked, because obviously he didn't do, or the pilot didn't do what ATC said, later on when ATC asked, the pilot is like, oh, it's not in my database. Guys, you have to tell ATC immediately if um, you are unable to follow their instructions. Of course, you can take like 30 seconds to a minute and uh, try to figure out what is wrong if something isn't working, but then you should call ATC before they feel the need to call you because something isn't uh, going as it should. The seven four connect arrival one two six four two five bye bye. Um Sky one seven three. I'm curious on how to do a fuel dump if needed. Can you explain that? Um well in the seven three seven you cannot dump fuel. In the seven three seven you have to burn the Nation fuel off. One contact mention one two four zero five zero two. One two four zero five zero I believe some someone Juliet two. München, hallo, Air Berlin, 77 Mont Juliet, Flight Level 240, immer Kerax. Ja, ich sag mal Mont Juliet, hallo, Alter, die 280, oder? 280, Air Berlin, 77 Mont Juliet, any chance we can do 260? Order. So for now we maintain 260 and increase if needed, or 280 and then decrease as needed. Be 280, I believe. 77 Juliet. Oh boy, what a waste of money. Okay, speed 280. If that is what they want, that is what they get. Three hundred, two four seven zero, lower than five. Transfer level three hundred. Three hundred, two four seven zero. Your wings nine six four six. Tower one one eight three two. Tower one one eight three. The your wings nine six four six. Sure, thank you. Ryanair two four fifty. Sorry, my bad. I was mixing you up with another airplane. Transfer level two hundred, please. Level two hundred, Ryanair two four fifty. Thank you. Okay, sir. Speed is two eighty. Transfer one fifty, lower. Speed two eighty, one hundred and seventy. Two eighty, one hundred. Then let's start doing a little bit of um, approach preparation. We might actually have to put the autopilot on. Command A, auto throttle. And then I'll quickly start putting something in. Kerax normally is level 110 or below. Two fifty below 100, forecast, request, transition level. Let's see if we can find an ATIS for Frankfurt. Should be 18825. Sorry, Okay, that's all we needed. So, um... Transition level 60, and what did they say is the QNH 1018? Romeo 25 right, and we are going to use ring 72, and 10 miles, and 4 miles. Quick look into the Navigraph charts then. Uh, 
And here we go. Well, first of all, time to get rid of all this um, land stuff. Approach two five. Right, Yankee. Force is 247, almost the same as in Berlin. 109.75. And for the missed approach, we need Frankfurt 9, 14, 2, and then Taunus 13, 3, 5. Minimum 553. And here we go. Okay. What did I say was the minimum? 1018. Uh, sorry, the QNH 1018. Pre select that. Okay, so get rid of the charts, get me the landing performance, en route, Frankfurt 25 right. It's a dry runway, they have 3 knots tailwind for now. 12 degrees, 1018 on a flap 30 landing. Let's calculate what the um, landing performance here is. And this, by the way, is virtual performance tool. You can see the logo in the top left there. Really recommendable tool. Looks almost exactly like the real Boeing tool. So let's say it's 60.5 landing weight. Calculate, so flip 30. Okay, we can't do idle reverse because the brake cooling is too long. So, flap 30, auto brake 3, 12 minute brake cooling. That looks good to me. Okay, so, um, quick approach briefing then. Threats for the arrival. To be honest, I don't really see any. Um, we're well familiar with Frankfurt. So, um, speed 250 below 100, forecast page filled in, fixed rings 25 right, 10 4. For the arrival routing, Kerax 3 Alpha arrival, Kerax towards Golf Echo Delta, Delta Fox 407, Delta Fox 408, Delta Fox 411, and then we follow the um, routing on the downwind over here until 416 from where we are continuing on the um, outbound sector. I let Yankee 25 right, there is a little bit of a chance that we get a last minute change over to Romay 25 left, so if that happens we'll just re-engage the autopilot. Um, Otherwise, the approach starts at a depot in 5000, 3.2 degree glide down to the minimum of 553, which is selected on both sides. In case I missed approach, we proceed um, straight at 6.3 miles Frankfurt Mine at 800 feet or above. And that's the Foxtrot point, 800 above, then a right turn, 319 inbound to a Tango Alpha uniform, and then turn right, 083 towards Mag Tango Romeo, climbing to 5000. We don't need that stuff anymore from our departure, so that's this complete. For the taxi, I really like to use the um, parking stand charts here, because they are really detailed. So, we land on 2.5 right, the Kate's probably Papa 14 or Papa 16, they're most likely via Papa, whole chart November 1.1, 1, 1, and then from there, November 1 1, and most likely Lima, somewhere to the parking stands up here on the um, parking stand east charts. That should be pretty much it. Okay. So far, any questions on the approach briefing? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Then let's do the descent checklist. Pressurization, land out 350, anti ice, off, approach briefing fuel, discussed, IS melt box, checked and set. ILS runway 10, 
And that is the descent checklist complete. Um, Bootwin, do I see status on the weather update in MSFS? To be honest, I never saw any. And I do have live updating enabled. And Roy, for Berlin I'm using the Aerosoft Airport and for Frankfurt I'm using the Virtual Fra Freeware Scenery, which is a really nice one. So it's called um, Project Minus Fra dot uh, org, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Anyway, let's fly manually again. I'm somewhat in the mood for it. And because it's so much fun, flight directors off. Blocked. Third six to six descent level two two zero. Evelyn seven seven one Juliet. Okay, set. Two two zero checked. Six two six. Okay, that is in south. Yeah, so we gotta redo everything. Lovely. Okay, in that case, flight directors on, present heading, level change, auto throttle, Delta Foxtrot 626, so they are taking us onto the southern runway then. Okay, LNAV available, LNAV, and that means we can redo the entire approach briefing for the southern runway. Two five left, six to six, have on. Then get rid of all this. Vertical speed. Two nine, you're greater, I believe, in seven seven one, Juliet. No wonder that we went bankrupt. No wonder we went bust like this. Interesting approach to level off. I could swear I pressed that command button earlier, but. Well. Why is it climbing? Oh, it's recapturing, okay. So, let's redo the entire approach preparation for Romay 25 left. Oh boy. So, one more time because it's been so funny. we need then. You know what? I'm just gonna keep that um, ILS Yankee chart because I wouldn't be surprised if they change us once again. So courses are the same. Triple one one five and triple one one five. Missed approach straight up Frankfurt mine fourteen point um, two. And then we need Charlie 1535. And the minimums 562. Okay. Little camp until uh, the perfect and ready. 
Been a Okay. Um, I think that should be mostly it. So, quick recap of the approach briefing. We're going towards Delta Fox 626, which is here on the extended center line. From there, we have a lot of waypoints leading us eventually towards Letkey, which is the final approach fix. Check 180 knots over at Letkey. Like this. In 4,000 3 degree glide, minimums 5.62, set left and right. Missed approach straight ahead 5.5 miles, that's the echo point. Then left turn radial 242 until 8 miles, that's what we have here. All 5,000, whichever is later left to Charlie, climbing 5,000. And that's exactly what we have up here as well. Okay, so this time we're going to vacate the runway. Most likely over here. 127725, Evelyn 771, Juliet, tschüss. München radar, lot 666, good, and Abend in Airborne, uh, 7000 feet. In November, speed 280, speed 280, Evelyn 771, Juliet, flight level 220, in Mount Delta Fox, lot 626. Evelyn 771, Juliet, lang, good Abend, identified. Okay. So yeah, we will get the runway either Mike 17 or Mike 21, then most likely via Mike, um, Mike 8, and then parking somewhere on any of these stands over here, on those Victor stands. Any questions? No? Very good. Lufthansa 8 Whiskey November, are you able to reach flight level 1? And um, Keith, Munich has no idea of the landing runway. They decide that when you contact the approach controller. So um, that is only decided by approach. So really not a lot that we can do. But well, we've... We briefed both runways now, so if we do get a runway change once again, then I'll just change the FMC frequencies minimums, and um, that's going to be it then. Only thing we have to be careful with, um, they report a wind of variable 3 knots now, so that means the ILS Yankee approach is probably not going to be available anymore. So then it might be the ILS Zulu for Romney 25 ride, but we'll see about that. We just have to wait and see what they do. In any case, we do have a few moments, so let's quickly talk to the passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, your uh, captain speaking. My name is Emmanuel, and I would like to give you a quick update on the flight's progress. We will start our descent towards Frankfurt in a few moments, and we expect to be landing there in about 25 minutes. I would like to thank you very much for being with us. Hope that you've enjoyed this day on board and wish you a very nice day of applicable and nice and safe continuous journey. Once again, thank you very much for flying with us and a happy new year. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, einen schönen guten Abend aus dem Cockpit, Ihr Kapitän. Mein Name ist Emanuel und ich habe noch ein kleines Update zu unserem Flug. Wir werden den kürzeren Sinkflug in Richtung Frankfurt beginnen. Wir erwarten jetzt noch etwa 25 Minuten Flugzeit. In ähm, Frankfurt erwarten wir gutes Wetter bei 13 Grad. Wir bedanken uns herzlich, dass Sie heute unsere Gäste waren, wir wünschen Ihnen einen schönen Aufenthalt, gegebenenfalls eine gute und sichere Weiterreise und würden uns freuen, Sie auch bald wieder an Bord eines unserer Flugzeuge willkommen zu heißen. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Okay, the passengers are catered for as well. So then we should pretty much be uh, done. Evelyn 771, Juliet, Descent Flight Level 170. Set. Okay, so starting the descent. Hopefully, that means that um, we'll be on the ground very soon. Okay, so let's give it another try at hand flying. Maybe, just maybe, we have all the time we need now. Lufthansa 6, Lima Yankee, when ready, descend to reach flight level 110 at Kirak. Descend level 110 to reach Kirak. 
For a few moments earlier in the flight, I thought like, well, maybe I can just uh, hand fly the entire flight, but then we got messed over by ATC. For some reason, that always happens, doesn't it? Somebody asked me earlier in the um, comments underneath one of my videos how I would trim the airplane in hand flying. So, um, well, as we're hand flying right now, why don't we talk a little bit about it? And um, trimming the plane is done by, first of all, you position the nose using your control column. So, um, you use your control column to position the nose exactly where you want it to be, and then you hold the trim switches until the control column is returned to the neutral position. And that's why you keep it. Also another point there, um, that is worth mentioning, is that you need to be very careful when hand flying the plane, and don't try to uh, overcomplicate things. So, um, you can make your life easy by just um, accepting some minor deviations like instead of a thousand feet a minute you might do a thousand one hundred or so that is really not an issue and it does make your life a lot easier so a human pilot cannot really fly as accurate as an autopilot can so just accept that I believe 771 Juliet, descent flight level 110, rate of descent 2000 feet per minute or greater. I believe 771 Juliet, descent level 110, 2000 or greater. That, 110 checked. And let's do vertical speed 2000. Engine MTI is on. Jet 154 Victor, when ready, descend to reach flight level 110 at Kira. Quite warm up here, we have a true air temperature of plus one already, which is quite a lot for these flight levels. Then, of course, we are flying quite a fast speed as well. Lufthansa 7 Mike Delta, hello, identified, cleared Kirax 3 Alpha arrival. Something I do have to say though, in real life, it is a lot easier to uh, fly an airplane precisely than it is in flight simulator. That goes for any airplane that I've flown in the sim. Um, in real life, you can set the rate of descent to like 50 feet a minute, easily. While in the sim, I always find that a little bit difficult. Yeah, I can now set it to like 2000. Let's see if we can make the 2000 exactly. Let's look at how tiny those inputs are that I'm doing on the controls right now. Because that is really all you need. If you have an airplane moving at this speed. Okay, fast mode's on. Lufthansa 307, sorry for the delay. Hallo identified and direct Delta Fox Pod 626. Kein Problem, uh, direct Delta Fox Pod 626 for Lufthansa 307. Lufthansa 7 Mike Delta, direct Kirax, runway 25 right. By the way, we do remember we have that speed restriction of 290 knots from ATC. Plus the 120 decimal 8, Evelyn 771 Juliet, cheers. Lufthansa 8 November Charlie, descent level 110. Descent 
On radar low, Abilene 771 Juliet descending level 110 in Mount Delta Foxtrot 626, speed 290 and rate of descent 2000 or more in formation Foxtrot. Abilene 771 Juliet, London radar contact, hello, exact ladder 257, descend 4000 feet, TNH 1018. Pilots 25 left, descend 4000 TNH 1018, Abilene 771 Juliet. Set, 4000 checked. Set auto meter 1018, passing 12500, descending 4000, no flags, stand by set. I will lean 771 Juliet, do you still need the rate of descent? I will lean 771 Juliet, Data. Roger. Okay, if he wants us to descend that quick, then we do descend that quick. This, by the way, means that we will exceed 250 knots. 118 is 05, I believe, in 771 Juliet. Cheers. Having 10 minutes to landing. Direct hello, I believe, in 771 Juliet. Okay, so passing 10, descending 4, 10 tracks. Fuel balanced, 4 pumps, lights on, angle of bank 25, aircon and press 4.4 set, fast modes on, recall checked 1 to 1.5, deselected, 10 tracks complete. Six to six, Lucky, Evelyn, Sam, Sam, and Juliet. Okay, so six to six, then Lucky executes. Okay, there's traffic on the right. He's probably the reason why we have to. Um, 1000 feet a minute, Abilene 771 Juliet. NTIS off. Just the 8th, and the the Evelyn, some we need to short level segment to reduce our airspeed. Twenty or greater, I will need some some more We'll keep it at 250 for now. Okay, so I just told ATC that um, it's company requirement that we must not exceed 250 below 6,000. So that's why I'm just about pretty much leveling it off until we are down at 250 knots, and as soon as we are at 250. Better less to have left Evelyn some some more Juliet. Okay, the next traffic is 10 miles out. We can see that from the T cars. The next traffic on our runway, I should say. Okay, level change. Okay, we start receiving the ILS. Let's do a frisk check. Frequencies, triple one decimal one five. Rings, let's see what we have there. Two have left, ten miles, four miles. 
Islands, Island Frankfurt Southwest. As we can see here, standby instruments are set. And the course is 247. Approach checklist. All defeated instruments, trust checked, approach rates, checked and set, approach checklist complete. And we have one to go. So let's do things old school. Okay, sorry. One So unless ATC tells us anything different, at 15 miles we're going to start reducing our airspeed. That means we'll have 200 knots at 10 dB. Which is pretty much exactly what we look for in the optimal case. You are blocking each other. Okay, how to fly on? Left heading 280 okay for ILS to perfect. 200 not greater, I believe in 7-7-1 Juliet. Okay, he said our greater, so let's keep the 250 for now. Last lop alive. Okay, we we'll start speed reduction now. Perhaps one, speed checked. One step here, greater until five, Evelyn 771, Juliet. Perhaps five. Speed checked. Last look capture. Five thousand feet set. Oh, my name is Manana, Evelyn, Sam, Sam, and Juliet, for us now, Come on, airplane. Well, let's go from the ABC number. Comfort Tower, Force Noise, yeah, 7-7-1 Juliet, ILS 2 5 left. Evelyn, 7 7 one Juliet, Tower, Wood, Force Noise, 2 number 2. 7 7 one Juliet, we have 2 5 Santa inside as well. 
Or it's just a little hint from my yes, side to tell him, like, we could take a swing over at any moment. Okay, get down for 15. Landing checklist. Start switches, continuous, recall, checked, speed brake, arm green light, landing gear, down 3 green, auto brake, 3 set, holding in flaps, flap 30, set VRF plus 5. In the tower, this looks under 1 kilo fox, but it's just an island, 2 set left. Kilo fox for tower, good, number 2. Left from the front of Christie, cross 2 for center, right on Lima, short November 1 4. Okay, flaps 30, 30, green lights, holding at landing lights. I'll just turn them on now. First, Abilene 771 Juliet, wind 1 degrees, 2 5 left, Cleveland. 2 5 left, Cleveland, Abilene 771 Juliet. Hello from the 8 risk in November, left to Mike, Mike 3-0, Volker 2 rolling point. Left Mike, Mike 3-0, uh, cut your rolling point, this is the 8 risk in November. Hello from the 8 risk, right Lima, November 1 4, April 1 4, 5 0. Right Lima, November 1 4, and 1 2 so the glide stop and the puppy are both pretty much useless on final approach to this runway so I'll go below them right now intentionally and minimum continue center behind one departure ahead. Speed break up, thrust reverse normal. You're going so on echo, wind variable cannot come with 25 center, clear for takeoff. 80%. 100 knots. Contract with the front line departing, you're going 320, down from the 25 center behind. 80 knots, manual brakes. Lofner 2, big crash 2, Yankee Yankee, down from the 25 center. Evelyn 7 Juliet, right Mike, Mike, question right, Mike Tango, short Tango 4. Mike Tango, short Tango 4, Evelyn 7 7 1 Juliet. Stand with Tower, good evening, good Sunday, November Charlie, and it's 5 left. Okay, hey, November Charlie, Tower with a number 2. Okay. Number 2, good Sunday. So we go off to the right here. Hello there, German Wings. Then on towards Tango and we hold short at Tango 4. I'm gonna show you that on the charts in a few moments. In the meantime, just about to get our aircraft to taxi. That's probably most important right now. Okay, so our taxi routing. We vacated over here, right here, then on Mike. And we continue all the way to Mike. Left onto Tango and hold short Tango 4, which is over here in front of the runway. Oh, time to clean up.
There was a question earlier on in the um, live stream if we can do single engine taxi in the 737. The answer is of course yes we can and you, are, you guys are going to see it in about a minute's time. Somebody else asked me earlier if I could get you guys the Navigraph charts on screen for the entire taxi on a complicated airport, so yep, I definitely can. Next frequency is probably going to be 1195. Let me just pre select that. Station Colleen, second. I see one uniform, what is your three, Watch out. Look, the one kilo fox for taxi left, mic, mic, 30, we'll call 200 points. Send the one kilo fox in exit left, and then vacate right, and then taxi left, mic, mic, 30. Um, exit right, then via my physical He seems a little bit overloaded. Okay, so we have three minutes engine cooldown. Shut down engine number two. Look in the eight number Charlie, wind one one degrees, three knots, coming two five left, clear land. Sorry, so for the first speed, for three two left, we'll find the eight that Air Europa over there is pretty much where we are about to go. He's on uniform going southbound, and we'll go in Tango, yeah, please, northbound. Tango, taxi via Tango, take cross Tango 2, 8.1 to 1, 95, 0, cheese. Cross Tango 2, Tango 4, and 1 to 1, 95, Abilene, 771, Juliet, Joe. 8.0 Abilene, 771, Juliet, crossing Tango 4 and Tango 2. Abilene, 771, Juliet, 8.0. Leipziger 2-0, Oscar, äh, Disregard, Leipziger 2, Oscar Whisky, April, hallo, äh, I call you for push. Leipzig 2, Oscar Whisky, copy. Okay, so left here into Tango. Then he cleared us to cross Tango 4. The reason he needs to clear us to cross those is because they are exactly on the extended center line of the finals. So if there was an aircraft approach at Robin 25 Center, then um, we would have to hold shot over here on this one until the aircraft has passed. You can see the approach light system over here. So we are crossing directly behind the runway right now. That's why we needed um, Tower's permission to cross these points. Hold shot of Lima. Hold Lima will be blocking the um, Tango 2 then, Evelyn 771 Juliet. Okay, that is. Evelyn 771 Juliet, uh, taxi to Saint Victor 107 via November, East November. Victor 107, November, East November, and uh, we'll have to swing over a little bit towards the uniform here to clear the wings of the AI Europa, Evelyn 771 Juliet. Okay. So I'm pretty sure we would have clipped the wing of this guy if we um, just went over here. Okay, start APU. And Victor 107 straight out here, left, left. And then we are all the way at the gate. So, um, why is there a light directly on the center line of the taxiway here? I guess I don't want to know. American Niner, ah, this we got. American 4955, pushed back approved. Oh, Victor 107. 
But you don't need to follow me for this. American four nine five five. Yeah, pushback approved and uh, didn't get the the last part of uh, Victor. What? Sorry. Okay, Victor one zero seven. That is over here. Pushback a beam stand Victor one one three. Okay, I am at uh, gate uh, Delta one, Mark four nine five five. Yeah, I know, but uh, when you are doing your pushback, you should uh, push a beam stand, Victor 113. Okay, copy that. Uh, push back to beam the Victor 113, Mark 4955. Good job, GSX. Give me the guidance and feed. Something you only see in the US. And here we are. Okay, Brexit. CPU available. Two blue, one red. Engine's dead. Let's leave that frequency. It's a bit too busy for my for my taste. That is better. Cabin crew, this arm slides and open doors. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Frankfurt Airport. So, we will need stairs on this one. Engine 1 and 2 below 20%. And 2, anti collision light off. So, transit shutdown checklist. Electrical on ground power, fast modes off, propeed auto, anti ice off, voice recorder on, air compacts auto, engine bleeds on, APU bleed off, exterior lights steady and wheel well, start switches off, auto brake off, speed brake down descent, flaps up no light, park and brake set, start lever cutoff, weather radar off, transponder 2000 standby, CBRCB in, cockpit door unlocked, shutdown checklist complete. Okay. Then we need stairs on both sides and we'll need a bus as well. And the handling. Alright, that is uh, sector number one complete. Then it's time to get back um, to Berlin. And Keith, um, would you put the strokes on even if crossing before the runway threshold? Um, no. We potentially could, but we don't have to. There is no law that would say we need to turn the strobes on when we're doing this. So that's the reason why I didn't do it in first place. When crossing an active runway, then yes, you uh, need to do it. But um, since that was not the case, we didn't have to do it. Okay, so let's have a look at this beautiful little airplane there. And beautiful little bus crashing into the stairs there. Okay, um, start the deboarding, please, and you guys can already get me a fuel truck. Okay, return flight uh, from Frankfurt towards Berlin. Why don't we look into the flight planning together? And of course, why don't we look into the um, landing rate together, first of all. So, Sim Toolkit. Let's see what that thing looks like. Pretty much a straight line of flight. That is always very good. It was a positive landing. We can see that here already. But I'm going to say a few words about that in a few moments. So, view the full landing report. And here we go. So, um, runway 25 left, we touched down prior to the aiming point. Alex, thank you so much for the 10 euro donation. I miss Air Berlin, frohes Neues. Yeah, frohes Neues, yeah, and absolutely so do I. Okay, um, so we touched down just prior to the aiming point, but exactly on the center line. 
It's been a little bit of a positive touchdown there at 330 feet a minute. So that is like where the passengers feel a good bump. Like they know, all right, we've made it, we're there. However, um, it is, well, positive. The passengers know we've landed, but that is really um, all there is to it. So it wouldn't hurt or anything at 300 feet a minute. A quick word on why we touched down a little bit um, more positive and a little bit earlier. That is because we um, had that localizer and the glide slope leading us in far too long. So I don't know why it is. On Frankfurt, the localizer and glide slopes lead you somewhere over here. And um, that's why I had to go a little bit under the... Um, that's why I had to go a little bit under the puppies and the glide slope. And uh, yeah, well, then touched down a little bit early, so I could have flared a little bit stronger. But then again, the uh, target in Frankfurt is to take the first exit you can. And that is like 1,600 meters down the runway. So in order to do that, you need to touch down early so that the next aircraft behind you um, can get his landing clearance as soon as possible because they are using 2.5 mile separation here in Frankfurt. And Peters, can you consider that a normal landing? Yeah, it's a positive landing, but it is a normal landing. That's what I would say. It is definitely on the um, harder side of landings. That's out of question. But uh, I would absolutely say that is still a normal landing. So, um, let's get rid of Sim Toolkit Pro and then look at SimBrief for the planning of the return flight. So we're going to be Abilene 7502, Frankfurt to Berlin. And the departure is going to be at, um, let's call it 15. Cost index, 8. So, passengers, we are going to take, um, let's make that a full house, actually, 186. And we'll take, like, 500 kilos of a freight as well. And Andrea, the uh, glide stop leading us in long is definitely a simulator problem. That is not something that would happen in real life. 20 minute taxi out might be realistic actually. For the routing, we have to take the routing from the event description in um, Watson, Germany. So let's take that. And then 25 Santa, 25. I'll just change this one so that we get our sits calculated here in Simbrief because the sits are quite long and we definitely want them to be um, taken into account. So if you look at this in Frankfurt, you depart 25 Center, you go to the south first in order to get around um, Mainz over here, and only then you go back to. Um, and only then you go back towards the route. Okay, so generate the flight, please. Goodwin, when do you fill out all the wins for the lacks in the FMC usually? Well, by SOP we only fill in the um, the average wind and that's it. If you want to fill out the exact wins, that is really up to you. Um, you don't have to do it. You can, but you don't have to. Okay, let's see. They say the routing is maximum flight level 230, so we can't take the uh, 240 that Simbrief has planned over here. So let's um, change that manually, and that is bullshit anyway, the step climb at the end. You know what, we'll just manually force it to become flight level 230. And that should be sufficient for the entire route. Um, amazing Maze, would you prefer SimToolkit Pro or Volanta? Absolutely SimToolkit Pro. Okay, so that's our flight calculated, then let's go ahead. Pre-file that one on Vatsim. Flat plan filed. So back to some toolkit. Flight planning. Takes a little while as always. And pilot guy 707, for oceanic flights you would fill out the, the actual wins so that you get accurate ETAs for waypoints and position reports. That is right. That is actually true. I forgot to mention that um, 
during my reply because I don't fly oceanic that much. So you are actually fully right there. Okay, so that is our flight planning completed. Let's head right back into the aircraft and see what we need then. Um, we looked at the weather earlier on, but let's have a quick look at the latest, see if there is a new forecast available. So Berlin Carbock, 220 at 13, but that's all tomorrow. Okay, so it is Carbock, it stays Carbock. And the same goes for our alternate Leipzig, so the full arrival is in already. I don't see any reason to take extra fuel, to be honest. Um, let's see. Might take five minutes more just because of the Vatsim event. So um, 200 on top. So 6-4, 6-6. Six, six, six. Give me 100 for the APU, 6-7. 6.7 tons of fuel. Deboarding is complete. The bus can go. Okay, 184 is maximum in PMDG. That's fine for me. And you guys can start unloading the luggage. Let's do something different. Um, for the way back, we'll actually carry some company cargo. 200 kilos. And those go into the aft hold. And then we can take 300 kilos, which is going to be the um, passenger's baggage, into the forward hold. That is how we, we would do it normally. Company mail goes in the back. That is usually aircraft spare parts, like some tires, or um, I've transported an IRS already. You know, that kind of stuff. Let me take 300 in the front, 200 in the back. You guys can start loading. And on here, request the new passengers to come. And then we can start with our pre-flight preparation. So, question to you guys. Do you want me to fly from the uh, captain's or from the first officer's seat on the second flight? And Keith, would you consider the return using the current time and weather? Um, to be honest, I would prefer to stay daylight. And that is a lot of guys saying from the first officer's seat, so, well, you've spoken. In that case, let's see, camera, pilot views, and we'll be the co-pilot then. Feels somewhat familiar, the seat. Okay, so, bus is here, they can start boarding. And then we can start doing our stuff as well. So, Frankfurt to Berlin, please. And request that flight. Okay, route is uplinked, so runway 25 center, my room 7 mic departure, arrival, it could be either runway, um, I'll start with 25 right, and then we come in via Ogbear, so let's take the Ogbear 25 right, activate, of course Linux 8, what else do we have here? Um, 3.4 tons of fuel, reserves, 58.6, and then truce level 230, what does it say there, root data uplink, okay, cancel, top of climb went 23953, 
ISR deviation plus 2, so we'll take the uh, minus 30, add 2 to that, that makes minus 28. Like this, transition altitude 5001. Okay, um, let's see what our emergency procedures are going to be on this one. So, Sim Toolkit, thank you very much, but we'll take this one and the Virtual Performance Tool. So, reset current aircraft, departing Frankfurt, 25 center, and here we are. Climate 247 degrees to Sobra. And then enter non-published holding, 250 left turns. Okay. So we can just say we want to go to Sobra. And then it is 250 degrees left turns, so I'll draw a radial 070 around that. Come on aircraft, you should be able to understand that. Okay, and that's it. Of course, we can put that towards the end of the legs page as well. Sobra. Oops. This is what I meant to do. So hold at Sobra 250. And uh, left turns. MSA 3900 they set, so we're going to use 4000 above. Okay, boarding is well underway, it seems. And with that, our FMC should be finished as well. Good. Refueling 6.7 is done. Okay, and that should pretty much be the preparation. All we need now is going to be our Navigraph charts. So, flight, unload, import, yes, Frankfurt to Berlin. The departure looks correct, synchronized charts, and as always, I want the um, parking chart as well. Good. So with that, we are pretty much prepared for the briefing. So threats for the departure. Um, well, might be quite busy, but that's really all. So in order to mitigate against that, we'll listen carefully for our call sign and um, try not to respond to anything that is not immediately meant for us. And with that... Let's start doing a route check. Now, even with the routes uplinked like I'm doing it right now, we still need to do a careful route check because, you know, the chance of um, selecting an incorrect route or maybe Simbrief hasn't exported it and you've imported an old one if you've flown the same uh, city pair earlier on are quite great. So let's do the route check. We're going from Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot to Echo Delta Delta Bravo, and we're the Bravo Echo Romeo 7502. Um, for our routing, we fly via Maroon, Yankee 153, Whiskey Romeo Bravo, Papa 12 Batel, and Papa, sorry, Tango 207 Okba, with a ground distance of 374. And we have 370, 4.4 tons, versus. 3.3 tons, so 25 minutes extra fuel on board, which is going to be all that we'll need. Time UTC 1206, altimeter 1018, reading 370. The MFRA is going to be something like 1300 um, and a bit. Let's set 1400 initially. Uh, flight reactors are on, and the master is on my side. Standby instruments are set. 
This is going to be a right to Jacob from Romeo 25, center flaps 5, noise abatement procedure number 2 with a buck up at um, 1500 feet. What else? Emergencies, straight out to Sobra, pick up the hold. That's what we have over there. Climbing 4000, MSA 3800. Push back with a nose to the. It could be either side. And um, then we'll have to see about the taxi. But just to give you guys a quick overview of what we are probably going to do for the pushback and taxi. Let's have a look at this. We are up here on Victor 107. So it's going to be either onto November over here. Or it might also be onto November facing towards November East. And then we taxi either November, November 1 or November East Lima. And then somewhere like this to our runway. The departure is going to be the Maroon 7 Mike departure chart 10 3 Quebec 2, transition altitude 5000. In the FMC 25 Center, Maroon 7 Mike, transition 5001. Contact lung radar when advised by tower. Sits are also minimum um, noise routes and operational runway use concept, we don't really care. Speed max to 50 below 100, not applicable in airspace, Charlie. We'll stay in Charlie, so if they ask us to fly faster, then we can. Initial climb clearance, flight level 70, and that is selected up here. And we might as well put that into the FMC as well. For the routing, straight out Delta Vox 999, above 800 feet. Then left turn towards Nauheim, 1375, and we can actually set that active in the radios. So 1375 and 1375. Okay, um, then it's going to be 194 degrees, 3.6 miles, Delta Foxtrot 180, above 2500 feet. Right hand turn, 278, 3.2 miles to Roxaf, maximum speed 230 knots, and I've got the stop climb in here. And then right again, 335, 2.4 miles, Adevo, above 6000 feet. Then 334, 6.2 miles towards Lisku. And we have that in here. Then 016, 15.4 miles, Taboom. And finally 017, 11.6, Liski. 014, 15.9, Lorpa. And same track, 6 miles to Maroon. And we have all of that in the FMS. You have any questions about the departure briefing? Probably not. Let's go ahead and see if we can get our clearance and see if we get any um, any slot. Well, the question shouldn't be if we get any slot. The question really should be what slot we are going to get. But let's find out. Frankfurt Delivery, guten Abend, Herr Berlin 7502, Information Hotel, Request Clearance to Berlin. 7502, hallo, Hotel korrekt, Clearance Berlin, Maroon 7, Mike, Departure, Flight Plan, Root, Climb, Fire, Sit, Flight Level 7, Zero, Squad 1000. Herr Berlin 7502, Clearance Berlin, Maroon 7, Mike, Flight Plan, Root, Climb, Fire, Sit, Flight Level 7, Zero, Squad 1000, any slot? 7502, not the moment, uh, report ready. Perfect, we call you in 5 minutes. Okay, score 1000 for the FMS, 25 Center, Maroon 7 Mike, and flight level 70. Okay, perfect, that's all we need. They are done with the boarding. They are almost done with the loading. We can already get rid of all this. Also get a pushback tuck already. United 9833. Roger, call you. Start up the APU. Roger, call you back. Okay, then let's um, do our takeoff performance. So, virtual performance tool once again. Very, very handy tool. 25 Center, we'll take Lima 6 intersection. It's a dry runway. Uh, the current wind 090 at 1. Uh, I'll just take 3 knots of tailwind. That's more conservative. 
11 degrees 1018 optimum max 5 auto off off for the dispatch into berlin 25 right is more limiting drive five knots tailwind uh, 12 degree 1018 weight and balance um reset that please thank you so catering winter nil duty free we have 184 adults on board and that's gonna be 130 over there and then we need 27 and 27 if i'm not mistaken yep so cargo forward hold is going to be 300 after hold 200 fuel 6700 taxi 227 and the trip fuel uh, trip fuel from a uh, sim toolkit pro up here two six four five sorry i didn't have that can you just repeat that okay so zero fuel weight 58.1 perfectly correct there's a 58.6 i just need a point of view where i can actually see something oops this looks good so 58.1 missing 500 kilos yeah we miss a few passengers so that's good enough 64.9 versus 64.8 okay so calculate 22k takeoff 42 degrees 22k and 42. 88.4 versus 87.5. Good enough. Flips 5. Take the CG from here. Speeds 41, 41, 46. And 41, 41, 40. Or oh, 44 we can't take. We have to make this 46. Okay, so. 1 Victor X. They set up a pool. One four six. And the MFRA thirteen sixty four. Repeat that four four two info hotel cleared Berlin maroon seven Mike departure flight plan route climb by a six flight level seven zero squawk one thousand. Thirteen sixty four. Okay. So with that we are pretty much ready. So, Chuck's gone. Let's say hello to the passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening from the flight deck. This is your first officer speaking. My name is Emmanuel, and in the name of Evelyn, I would like to welcome you all on board our flight to Berlin. Flight time today, about 50 minutes. We expect a smooth ride at 23,000 feet. I would like to thank you very much for being with us. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. And the cabin crew is shortly going to point out the safety features on both this Boeing 737-800 aircraft. I would like to ask you to pay your full attention, as that is not just for your own safety, but also for the safety of the passengers sitting around you. Thank you very much for your attention and once again welcome aboard. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, einen schönen guten Abend aus dem Cockpit. Hier spricht Ihr Co-Pilot. Mein Name ist Emanuel. Im Namen der Air Berlin sind Sie ganz herzlich willkommen an Bord unseres Fluges 7502 nach Berlin. Die Flugzeit heute 50 Minuten. Wir rechnen mit einem ruhigen Flug in einer Höhe von 23.000 Fuß. Wir bedanken uns ganz herzlich, dass Sie heute bei uns an Bord sind, wünschen Ihnen einen schönen Flug und wenn es etwas gibt, womit wir Ihnen den schöner gestalten können, zögern Sie bitte nicht, sich an unsere Flugbegleiter zu wenden. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit und noch einmal herzlich bei uns willkommen an Bord. Cabin Crew, Arm Slides and Cross Check. Okay, Transit Before Start Checklist. Gear pins. 1 to 3 removed. Oxygen, test 100%. Yaw damper on. Fuel. 6, uh, 4 required, 6, 7 on board. 4 pumps on. Fasten belts on. Window heat on. Air current press. Pax auto. Bleeds on. Set. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Instruments. Cross checked. Auto brakes. RTO. Speed brake. Down attend. Park and brake. Set. Step time cutout switches. Normal. Radius radar and transponder set in standby, radar and aileron trims, free and zero, takeoff briefing, discussed, PA, complete, FMC, CDU. 
set and one IS box automatic reduce 22k speeds 41 41 46 set stop trim 6.4 set performance with balance sign send phones off EFB airplane mode stowed flight openers and cockpit door locked doors closed uh, passengers guess, uh, seated before start checklist complete then time for startup clearance Aveline 7502 request to push and start 7502, start up approved, hold position, for pushback, apron 1 to 1 9 5 5 2. Start up approved, 1 to 1 to 9 5 5, Abilene 7502, chill. Start up apron, force noise, yeah, Abilene 7502, Victor 107, request pushback. Abilene 7502, uh, apron, hello, pushback approved, face east. Pushback approved, face east, Abilene 7502. Before start checks below the line, air compacts off, anti collision light on, park and brake set, transponder, hold off, before start check list complete. Let's master caution, air conditioning, dual bleeds, disregard that. Okay, so facing east, that's the nose facing to the left side. Brakes released. All engines clear, started. Roger. So, 37 minutes on the ground. I would call this a good turnaround. That sound when these guys turn off their engines is really a little um, strange. Okay, start engine 2. And 2. And 1. All pressure. MG King, 115 arrivals and 80 departures at Frankfurt. It's incredible, isn't it? This airport draws so much traffic on Watson. But it is one of the busiest on the network as well. And it really has the capacity that makes it very nice. Okay, start a cutout, monitor two, two stable, starting one. And Bootwin, to answer your question earlier, when we, would we close the isolation valve? Now, because now I'm closing it and setting the ride pack to auto, that means that we get um, the ride engine pumping air into the cabin already, so we do get some air conditioning on. But that and some non-normal checklists are pretty much the only points where we would close the isolation bell. Let's continue with the engine start. And two, all pressure, and one. Fuel on. Watch the valves in transit as the light goes bright, and then in position as the light goes out. Okay, we have two good starts. Clear disconnect, clear signal the right hand side with a pin and have a good day. Bye bye. Data cutout, monitor one. And the red line is gone. That's number one stable. Okay, flight control track. Full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudders, left, right. 
Neutral, B4 taxi checklist. Generators on, APU off, start switches continuous, probe heat on, anti ice off, air conditioning, PAX auto, bleeds on, isolation off, auto, flaps, 5 required, 5 selected, and the green light. Step trim 6.2 units set. Start, leave us idle, detent, flight controls checked, recall checked, before taxi checklist complete. Abolin 7502, request taxi. November East, Hold Short of Lima, I call you for further. November East, Hold Short Lima, I believe in 7502. Okay, so that is initially just go straight ahead, um, follow the taxiway. Pretty much like uh, this, this, and then Hold Short of here. Probably they have some oncoming traffic, I guess that's the reason why they want us to hold short. Okay, clear right, clear left, break released, config. So basically we hold the beam the entire air over here. There should be a whole trot line drawn somewhere on the um, textual line here as well, but the scenery sometimes misses them. It does happen. Evelyn 7502, okay, um, on to Lima, whole trot of Lima 1, and give way to the opposite 320, that's gonna turn into where? It's turning uh, on Stanton 116 at the moment. Roger, so basically we're clear by the time we get there. Okay. I don't know why he tells us to give way to this guy, because there is no way how we could get there so fast. Absolutely no way. Hey, Brand United, 933 Heavy, holding short November 4th. United 9RPG, Abram, hello, taxi straight ahead via Lima, hold short of Lima 1. Anyway, let's do the before takeoff checklist down to the line. Config. Check, flaps, 5-5, five, five, green light, step trim, 6-2, set, takeoff briefing, right to takeoff, runway 25 center, flaps 5, noise abatement 2, back up 1500, speeds 41, 41, 46, and the sit straight at uh, Delta Fox 999, left turn out, 199 decimal 9, Abilene 7502. Oh, hello, Abilene 7502. Airbnb 7502, Tower Guru, Lima 1. Lima 1. Okay, so first left, Lima 1, here's the sign. Oh, we're clear from the right, the thin air is holding. Okay, good, so let's continue the briefing. Right to take off, 25 center, flaps 5, noise 2, packs, auto bleeds on, anti ice off. Um, speeds 41, 41, 46. Sit straight out, Delta Fox 999. Left to Nauheim, climb level 70, contact departure when advised by the tower. And that's pretty much it. Um, emergencies go straight out to Sobra, hold 250 inbound. Left turns, climbing 4000, that's safe about the MSA of 3800. Any questions? No? Okay. Cabin, secure before takeoff check is complete down to the line. Okay. So made it to the only point. I take a, look, a few minutes there. Okay, the motto is established for World Way 25 
Um, junk pile 1986, so nice how fast you run the checklist. Yeah, um, you know, that's how we do it. That's just how we do it. Um, if you're familiar with the checklist, you can run them that quick. The important thing is that you still check everything and that you still do the briefing thoroughly. But when you do that briefing like four times a day, five days in a row, several hundred times a year, then eventually you know what to expect at what point. And then of course it's easy to remember all those important values from it. While of course to the untrained ear it really sounds like um, to the untrained ear it really sounds like a lot of information. But when you're used to it, then things go really quick because you are so familiar with them. Okay, so I guess the Lufthansa over there goes next, then the Sun Express, then us. That would be my estimate. But things might be a little bit different because they are changing um, the departure sequences a lot in Frankfurt. That's the overall reason why they have three different holding points over here. Basically, if they have aircraft that depart on different standard departures, then they can use even less separation. So basically, once the first aircraft is airborne, the second can get takeoff clearance already. I guess that guy over there is probably going to turn to the exit over here. The United will probably turn onto here, and we still have the Finnair A350 behind us, so he'll probably go by here. Now, the standard instrument departures used in Frankfurt vary by aircraft type. So, for example, the 320 up here, the um, 737s up here and up here, both have to do the so-called Südumfliegung, which basically is that left turn after departure that we are going to do as well. Evelyn 7502 behind, look in the 320 line, 2500 behind, confirm that's the one out of Lima 6. Roger. Okay, so we go ahead of the Sun Express. That's good. Before takeoff checklists uh, below the line, MCP, set, transponder, Tara, strobe lights on, holding and landing lights. Okay. Can't really see the approach, but the right side is clear. I'm gonna hold that explanation over here because our departure is obviously more interesting. Departure frequency probably 12015, I guess. Let's pre select that. But here how the tower actually assigns the intersections to the aircraft. I will need 7502, 25 clear takeoff. Okay. We'll keep it rolling then. Landing lights on. Stabilized. Set takeoff thrust. Auto throttle disconnect. Okay, set thrust manually. Take a thrust set, indications normal. 80 knots. Check. Okay. 
You're up, Father of Raid. One to zero, one five zero, Abilene, seven five zero two, cheese. As expected. On Abilene, seven five zero two, one thousand eight hundred seven zero, Maroon seven Mike. Back up. Abilene, seven five zero two, Mark it in a identified concept of one three zero. I'm low one three zero, Abilene, seven five zero two. Sorry, the front of 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 the speed restriction the front of 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 the the flaps out for that little difference there. Flaps up no lights, set standard, select green half, after take up checklist. And we'll keep the cabin seated until we're through the clouds. So air condition and pressurization, 1.9 climbing and set. Altimeters, standard 4.3 climbing 1.3.0. After take checklist complete. So the reason for the turn to the south is obviously this one, the city over here, which we don't want to overfly. That is Germany. Probably some of the um, guys living in the city went to court and the court ruled that aircraft have to fly around the city and that's why we're wasting hundreds of thousands of tons of fuel every year flying this stupid uh, thing to the south. But that's Germany. That is just how things work over here. Okay, temperatures are closing 10 degrees. Let's put engine and TIS on. Bye, bye. The flight director seems a little bit odd there, trying to um, make us roll wings level all the time, but looking at the um, vector line on the navigation display up there, there is absolutely no reason to go wings level at the moment. One two four, decimal seven five, Abilene seven five zero two. Bye. Seven two five. Seven two five. Ciao. Okay, autopilot on that gets a bit too much stuff at the same time. So, command B. 124. 725. I can't tell you the exact runway, but you can expect for now the northern runway. Hello, Kadri Alpha. Thank you. Langrada Low, Abilene 7502, level 110, climbing 130. Abilene 7502, Langen, hallo, Radar, Contact, Sign, Flight Level 170. Flight Level 170, Abilene 7502. Set, 170 tracks, Lina. Bravo, Alpha, 
Okay, we're getting clear of that guy. We'll outclimb him. Then I would say we're passing level 117, climbing 170, turn checks. And I'll keep the climb thrust reduced for now. So, fuel is balanced, four pumps, lights are going off, APU off, air condition and pressurization 4.8, climbing and set, fast melts on, recall, checked, 1 to 1.5, monitoring, turn checks complete. Vertical speed, 2000, and it feels quite uh, stable to me. Release the cabin crew. Um, crosswind, is there AI traffic as well? No, there isn't. This is all that zone. My bad, sorry. Hey, want to go? And we're on VS1000. Abilene 7502, climb flight level 230. Sieber 916 November, descend flight level 110. 230 checks. Wiener. And that stuff is set once, twice, and Three times monitoring one to one point five. Okay, we'll keep the passengers seated until we're above the clouds in front there. Um because these do definitely look bumpy. We'll keep the anti eyes on as well as we are about to re-enter the clouds. That looks really nice, doesn't it? The 737 really is a beautiful plane and the Avalon livery is a really beautiful livery on this beautiful plane, isn't it? I could watch this all day long, honestly. Such a lovely view on such a lovely airplane. And bootwind, correct. Um, for the performance tool, taking off with 10 knots of greater crosswind means using uh, um, means no longer using assumed temperature. That is correct. Okay, and of course I'm running into the cleared level at two and a half thousand feet a minute. But uh, uh, Langer Raider Walker one eight one five. Can okay. You confirm the um, engine anti ice off. Uh, the frequency. Let's quickly level off the plane. Walker one eight one five. Sorry, say again. Uh, can you just confirm the frequency? And now that we are level, we can release our passengers as well. Seatbelts off. 
Uh, my apologies, one two zero, definitely. Concept. Two hundred twenty miles to the top of descent. I don't really trust that to happen. Let's see. Normally. Sorry, my bad. One, two, six, at level 160 five, or something like that. Not 100% sure, but let's enter that, see what it does to the top of the sand. 185, that looks more reasonable. Okay, so quick fuel check then. Uh, can Proper climb, 9 minutes, eight took five. us 11 to get there, but we had to reduce our rate a few times as well. Should have 5.2 tons, we do have 5.5 tons, but we uploaded it a little bit more as well, so that looks good to me. And Walter, we are going towards Berlin-Brandenburg. Okay, so that's pretty much our setup complete for now. So uh, why don't we go and enjoy this? Actually, not 100% sure. This is probably the nicest, if you ask me. Of all those external views, I probably like this best. Do you guys have it as well from time to time that the clouds over there look really pixelated? Or over down here? This looks really strange. But I do get that from time to time in MSFS. And I don't really know why. By the way, a short while back, a couple of you have asked me under my um, best airliner of 2022 video if I would make a comparison between the PMDG 737 and the um, Phoenix A320. Now, I will eventually do that, but first of all, I um, want to wait for PMDG to bring the 737 out of early access state. So, by the time we have the EFB in and by the time the 900 is out, the multi-mode receiver hopefully, that is when um, I'm going to do that comparison video. Before that, I would just find it, you know, um, unfair to both PMDG and Phoenix, because at the moment both are still in an early access state. With the Phoenix, we're still missing the Sharklets and the IAE engines with the PMDG. Obviously, the um, EFB is a very big thing that's currently missing, so um, I am going to do that video, but that's going to be a thing for the future, when both aircraft are actually out of early access. Something else that I'm personally hoping for, that PMDG might include, but I don't know if they actually will, is the um, Route 2 feature, but we'll see about it. And Super Grumpy, which version of the 737 do I fly in real life? Um, primarily the 800, but I've also flown a 700 already, and I have done all the training, etc. for the Max, but I have actually not flown the Max yet. So what do we have there? Oncoming traffic, 1000 below, can we see him somewhere? Might just about be hidden in the clouds. I uh, can't see him. But looks like we might be uh, skimming those clouds over there. Let's put the engine anti ice back on. Hi, Ty. That's the one long hello radar contact, sorry. Cleared Unoco 3 Bravo arrival. We can start level 130 and proceed to Ramon. 
Okay, in the meantime, let's um, do a little bit of preparation for the arrival already. Because. Evelyn 7502, direct battle. Evelyn 654, proceed to battle. Okay, execute. Enough available? Enough. Okay, cruise uplink ready. Of course, all those waypoints are pretty much gone by now, but doesn't matter, we'll take it. And then forecast, you can request those wins as well. Also, let's see if we can get an ATIS already. Berlin 12377. The dreaded match with Düsseldorf. So, Düsseldorf and Berlin share the ATIS frequency, but Düsseldorf has a stronger transmitter. That's why, if you fly into Berlin in real life, you would um, sometimes get the ATIS only as low as flight level 100. But we seem to be lucky here. Okay, so we have information Foxtrot. Let's see about here then. Um, no idea on the top of the sand and what they are actually going to give us. But we might do a quick calculation. Even though, I, even though it's uh, kind of wishful thinking, but... Let's see what we get. One two six decimal six five zero Evelyn seven five zero two. Bye bye. Lingen Center United nine thirty three heavy uh, thirteen thousand. Same radar. Frohes neues Jahr. Evelyn seven five zero two. Flight level two three zero in Mount Battle. Seven five zero two Bremen one identified for Speed two sixty Evelyn seven five zero two. Hey, firm, as long as we don't pay the fuel bill. Two ninety knots, seventy and seven five zero two. Why is everybody going so fast on Vatsim? I don't get it. It really doesn't earn you much time. So, let me just give you an example of um, how little time you actually gain by going that fast. Um, this is the um, required time at progress page, and I have entered the destination runway. Now, this is what the aircraft shows us, um, what we can do by using different speeds. Now, if we went the very slowest, then we would arrive at uh, 1357 which is in an hour and seven. But that would mean re really mean flying it down at the um, stick shaker speed. If we went the very fastest, we would be able to arrive at 31. So in um, 41 minutes. But let's compare some of the more reasonable speeds. So um, I'm gonna open the progress page on the left FMC, and then I'm gonna change the accrual speed in here to show you some some of the distances. So now we have 1335. If we went back to Econ, uh, let me just try to stabilize it here because PMDG simulates a slightly older revision that doesn't recalculate. But here we go, auto throttle off. So if I execute that, we arrive a minute later. Fuel 4.1. Oh, let's do 290 again. Fuel 4.0. 100 kilos more. 100 kilos for two minutes. Actually, a minute and a half. You can see how it constantly changes between 34 and 35 over there. Now, what would happen if I actually go to the maximum speed, 330? 
Then you shove off. Three, no, actually just about a minute. And you would use another 100 kilos more. And what do you gain from it? Well, hardly anything. Okay, auto throttle back on. But that is just a small demonstration of why it is pretty much useless to go so fast. You gain maybe a minute at the price of 100 kilos fuel, which cost 1 euro per kilo. So for that one minute, you'd have to sell like two or three tickets more in order to make it worth the um, fuel price. Is that worth it? I can't really agree on that. So that's why going fast just hardly makes a difference. Um, if you're interested in that topic, I can really recommend you my cost index explained video where I also quote some um, original Boeing data where Boeing goes into some detail about how many millions airlines could save by flying proper cost indexes. For example, um, there was a very prominent example of an American carrier that used like um, cost index 30, I believe. And Boeing calculated that they would get the um, best possible economy by using cost index 12. On their flights, the average difference would be three minutes longer block time. So three minutes, that is like almost nothing. However, per aircraft, the company would save over 25 million dollars every year for three minutes extra block time. I find that absolutely amazing. And now you understand why carriers like um, EasyJet or Ryanair are using a cost index of uh, 6 or 10 or something the likes. It really saves a lot and a lot and a lot of money. And Big Mac, no, unfortunately no updates on that. Alright, so, um, let's do a little bit of approach stuff. So, get rid of that Frankfurt charts, don't need any of those anymore. The Lynn approach, 2-5 left and 2-5 right. We'll take both charts because it could become both runways. And we'll take the apron 1-3 as well. Also, always a good idea if you are unfamiliar with an area, is to have a look at the minimum radar vectoring chart. Because it gives you an idea of um, how low ATC can take you over here. So, let's start gambling. Um, let's start with 2.5 right. Force is 2.45, frequency is 109.9. They probably want us to stay fast in the descent as well. Rings are okay. Um, what we could do is a little calculation like this. Then we'd the plane would want to cross Ockbear at level 157. Okay. So 160 below was actually quite good. We'll stick with that. 180 knots at the FAF. Destination QNH, we had that in the 80s earlier on. Um, let's see, 1018 still. And that's sad. The Okay. So, approach briefing then, threats for the arrival. To be honest, um, might be a last minute runway change, so. We are mentally prepared for that. Apart from that, I don't see anything happen there. Free select Berlin Brandenburg VOR for the missed approach, and that's it.
Okay. So, um, 250 below 100, forecast page filled out, fixed rings 25 right, 10 4. And for the arrival, we have the Aqua 25 right arrival, which is Aqua Delta Bravo 413, max 220 knots above flight level 80, and a right turn Delta Bravo 423 above level 60. Delta Bravo 433, max 220, and then we go down the downwind. 433, 437, 447, and then eventually towards Ubuvu. For the ILS approach, Romney 25 right, have an on chart over here. Ubuvu 4000, 3 degrees, down to a minimum 354. Might still want to set that. Avalene 7502, any chance you can negotiate it direct to OK? Might be worth asking, I just saw this unnecessary turn up there. And we have quite a distance to the um, preceding aircraft, so if we take a shortcut like this, shouldn't put us too close to the preceding. And um, would save us a little bit of time as well. Okay, so, um, mis minimum 352, missed approach, or is it? Here it is. Climb a runway track 0 0.6 miles from the ILS, max 4000. Yeah, direct talk there, I believe 7502. Okay, that's talk there over there. Execute, LNF available, LNF. Okay, um, yeah, so for the missed approach, straight at one mile. Where is it? Rid of that. Straight ahead to one mile, then intercept um, radial 297 BBI towards Ockbear. So we have straight ahead to an intercept point 297 towards Ockbear. Climb initially 4000. Um, on the radio, climb at 5000, pass on 17 DME, climb flight level 80. Okay. So, how exactly is that working with the altitudes now? On the runway track, 1.3 miles, maximum 4000. Then follow radio to Ockbear, continue climbing on the radio to 5000. Okay. So, basically, to the intercept point, it should be 4000 feet, but we probably can't enter that. We can enter that. Okay. Intercept point 4000, as soon as we've done the turn to 5000, and then passing 17.7 .7 DME, oh sorry, passing 17 DME BBI, climb flight level 80, that's what we have. Aversion towards Leipzig, we require 3.4, we arrive at 4.0, that's 15 minutes extra fuel that we have available, burning 800 kilos, I'll calculate 600 in case we get some further shortcuts, so 62.3. Quite a heavy aircraft. Um, you know what? With all the Airbuses flying, let's actually take a flap 40 landing. Order brakes 3. That should get us out at the first intersection, Lima 4. And then via Victor 3, we continue to the apron and park somewhere over here at the terminal, maybe in the uh, north or in the south as well. And that's pretty much it. You have any questions about the prefix? On to four, one seven five, Abilene seven five zero two, choose. Five four, contact Bremen, Radar one two four, that's the number one seven five. Reach, keep up, side level one two zero, and report ready for the number one seven five. Bremen Radar, Force Mercia, Abilene seven five zero two, flight level two three zero, Emma, Abwehr. By the way, for those of you who don't speak German, Frohes Neues Jahr literally is Happy New Year. Ah, uh, forgot to mention the speed to him. But he'll ask us if uh, he'll ask us if he wants to know. Probably sees it on his screen anyway. 
Okay, um, let's do some landing calculations. As annoying as it is for airports that you're familiar with, you still have to do those um, mathematics all the time. So, landing in route 25 right, 2.5 dry. Latest is 190 at 8. Temperature 12, 1018, no um, We set the landing weight is 60. Berlin 7502, and ready, descent 120, level off. That 120 checked. Okay. That's in. Perfect. And continue the calculation real quick. We set the landing weight at 62.3, that means um, compared to the flight plan we saved 400 kilos, but that's alright. So 62 300. Let's quickly see what our numbers are. Using flap 30, yeah, I put that wind in earlier. So let's try that again. So using flap 30, 2148, but that includes 15% uh, allowance. So it's always a good idea to take a calculator. And subtract those 15%. So 2148 multiplied by 0.85 gives me 1800 meters. And if we go flip 40, how big is that difference going to be? Yeah, 200 meters less. 41 minute brake cooling, but the airplane is not going to go out anymore. So we are going to use idle reverse. Keep in mind, we took no reverse credit over here. So that does look good to me. I'm gonna stick with a flap 40 landing because we're pretty heavy at uh, 62 ton landing weight. So um, the problem is Airbuses fly slower than 737s. The A320 usually goes like 10, 15 knots slower than us. And um, therefore at such a high landing weight in an event where I do expect lots and lots of traffic I do opt for flap 40 in this case because it means that we will more match the speed of the airbuses and that is going to make our life a bit easier. So, descent checklist. Pressurization, land halt 150, anti-ice off, approach briefing fuel, discussed, IS and outbox, checked and set, descent checklist complete. Make a quick PA to the passengers. Speed 7502, speed 270. Had he told us that a little bit earlier, we would have had a much better descent profile. Because now, we are high. Yep, so thrust to idle, speed break out. By the way, I'm just about writing the controller that suggestion that um, he, he could have made our life a lot easier had he told us the um, speed restriction before we started the descent. Okay, so, um, yeah, with that, got to use the speed brake to catch our path back, but uh, that's what we'll have to do. So, descent checks is completed, I just wanted to do a PA. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from Flatec, this is your first officer speaking. My name is Emmanuel, and we have just started our descent towards Berlin. Remaining flight time approximately 20 minutes, which means we will arrive on time. Weather in Berlin, currently light wind from the south and the temperature 12 degrees. We would like to thank you very much for flying with us today. Hope that you have enjoyed your flight, and I am looking forward to welcoming you again on board of your future flights very soon. Until then, thank you very much for your attention, and we hope to see you again very soon. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren aus dem Cockpit, Ihr Co-Pilot, wir haben gerade den Sinkflug nach Berlin begonnen und E26 Wir haben gerade unseren Sinkflug begonnen und äh, werden in 20 Minuten in Berlin landen. Das Wetter dort derzeit ein leichter Wind nach Süd bei einer Temperatur von 12 Grad. Vielen Dank, dass Sie heute unsere Gäste waren und wir würden uns freuen, Sie auch bald wieder an Bord eines unserer Flugzeuge willkommen zu heißen. Bis dahin. Haben Sie einen schönen Abend und wir freuen uns, Sie bald wieder an Bord begrüßen zu dürfen. Okay, I'm back, speed 260, speed break is out, trying to get the speed down. And back on profile. Oh, nein, das muss 625. Berlin 7502. Frohes Neues. Frohes Neues, danke. Gerne. Bye bye. Das ist ein 5 Mike Tango, die 5 Flight Level 1. Engine Abend, hier ist on. Im Radar schon genannt, Berlin 7502, Descending 120, Speed 260, immer noch mehr. Berlin 5702, Berlin Servus, 3080, Descent Flight Level 100. 3080, Descent Level 100, Berlin 7502. Heading Select. Heading Select. And vertical speed 1000. So, anything useful we can take on top? Maybe 423 or something the likes. And how high does it want to be? At level 60, pretty much. Okay. So I'll change the restriction from 60 above to 60 at. Let me get a better view of power. Interesting, he seems to know the um, runway for a couple of those guys already. Let's ask as well. Abilene 7502, do you know our runway as well? Abilene 7502, what's protocol? You expect the ILS 256. Thank you, 256 left, Abilene 7502. And again, we have to redo the briefing. It's unbelievable. Anyway, okay, engine anti is off. First fly the aircraft. And then we can redo the entire thing here. And if, we, if we get the other runway, we'll have to stay high anyway. Let's do 500 feet a minute. Oh, two have left. Let's see what we have now. Looks good to me. Something like that is going to do the job for us. Twenty-five mile ring. That is for situational awareness. Okay. So, 109.5 And 109.5 Force is 245, we have that Then let's have, a, have another look into the charts Confirm that's Aberdeen 7502, speed 250 
What up? Okay, B250, more or less doing that anyway. Then I left 25 left, then 109.5. Oh, on the final. Sometimes I hate that. Um, they really inject the traffic very, very slowly. Uh, sorry, very, very quickly. Which then leads to the um, traffic advisory. Okay, minimum 249. And that's mostly it. Mr. Approach straight at, um, let's see, on runway track max 3000. So, runway track 3000 at point 60 me east, turn left max 190 radial 341 to Kilo Lima Fox. Okay, and Kilo Lima Fox 1515. Perfect. That's what we need. Double change. Okay, so this time, land on 25 left. The Cape Mike 5, Bravo, Victor 1, somewhere to the apron. Any questions? Probably not. Oh, Berlin. Berlin! And he down here is the old Berlin Tegel Airport. That was really the home base of Air Berlin next to Düsseldorf. I guess that is still for Air Berlin 7502, right heading 100, descent level 80. I'm sorry, what, I, what do I say? You say 5702, you, conf you confuse the first two numbers. Yeah, okay, sorry, my bad. Uh, I will try to fix this. Sponsor 1 of Victor X ray descent to 6000 feet, can I change on 018? Okay. By the way, I don't try to come along bitchy to the air traffic controller, but um, on an event that is as busy as this one, we really have to be sure about the call signs, that we don't accidentally execute the commands of another aircraft. So, Tegel, as far as I know, that is a refugee camp nowadays. Then again, we should be happy that they finally have the new airport in operation. So we should definitely see the positive things there. And um, Mike Fox Delta Charlie 3. Um, I really appreciate how you explain everything. Oh, be my guest, my friend. Okay, so passing 95, descending 80, 10 checks. Fuel is balanced with four pumps on. The lights are going on. Wir sind 6000 QNH 1018 und schon wieder der Zahlendreher, Air Berlin 7502. Okay, set, 6000 check, 1018, passing 92, descending 6000, no flex, stand by set. Let's put 433 on top. And set altimeter 1018, passing 88, descending 6000, no flex. Perfect, dann machen wir das doch gerne. Speed 230, Evelyn 7502. Okay, Speed 230. So, um, we can do a first track. Frequencies 25 left, 109.5, active, nav 1, nav 2, rings 25 left, 10 4, items, we have ILS balloon southwest, ILS balloon southwest, standby instrument set, course 245, approach checklist. Altimeters and instruments, cross check, approach rates, check and set, approach check complete. And the approach checks are also the latest point for the PM to take the uh, very shitty display. 
uh, sorry, the VSD, the vertical situation display. Seven five zero two, right by ten degrees, reduce speed to one zero one. Caroline seven five zero two, right by ten, speed two ten. Lufthansa one big X ray, contact arrival one three six, personal okay. one bye bye. I'll take it a tiny bit slower down to the up speed, then we fly most economically, like this. Get him seven six eight, decent flight level eight zero. Air Berlin six five four, the reduce speed to three zero one. Abilene 7502, descent 5000 feet. Abilene 7502, descent 5000 feet. Can you name it 1286, descent flight level 80, 0, speed 250. Okay, maintain present heading. Okay, so we'll probably get a downward vector over here pretty soon. Then he'll eventually take us down to 4000. And then we'll probably go below the final of 25 right onto the final of 25 left. That is what I would expect to happen here. So, Kevin secure. F060, Abilene 7502. Okay. Autopilot disconnect. Let's go and fly a little bit. So, Rainer 750, sorry for the delay. Turn a left heading 095. Decent flight level 100. Listening to 110, left heading 095. Can you name it? 1286, Ciao. Ich Direktor auf Rolls Neues, Abilene 7502. Abilene 7502, Direktor Gutenbach, Identified, Rolls Neues. Okay, looking at the amount of aircraft over here, we'll probably fly all the way out. So there is no sense trying to complete a continuous descent right now. We'll just take it right down to the level they assigned us. Maybe they take us over the final of the crossing runway. We'll see about that. Let's take the airplane right down to 5,000. Descent 4,000, right 070, Evelyn 7502. Standard 286 so, 8 Mike Alpha, Roger, descend with flight slope. Yeah, the flight slope is safe, guys. So, 5 Mike Tango, turn heading 250, clear the left. What to airport is that right in front of us here? Echo Delta, Oscar, November. Looks like a nice place just to go in there, just for a quick touch and go, and then go straight out again. In 2019, I had a flight to Palma de Mallorca, landing on runway 06 left, where you come in over Palma Bay, and there was a US aircraft carrier that was about a mile in front of the runway and perfectly aligned on the runway center line. 
Evelyn 7502, turn right heading 140. Evelyn 7502, right heading 140. DD 373, Lima, turn right heading 245. We were really tempted, like, um. Just like. Just make a quick touch and go there on that aircraft carrier. It was literally looking exactly like the runway. Oh, it's so lovely. Seven five zero two. Roger and confirm the heading again. Uh, 7502 heading 140. Heading 140, Evelyn 7502. Kinda thought I heard something different than what I said, but. Oh, we've got it confirmed. That's why I kinda rolled a little bit wings level there. Okay, they say the intercept is from the south, then we might as well extend the center line already. On him, two, four, four. There we go. I'm sorry, look at that five, eight, Mike Alpha, one, one, eight, that's eight. One, one, eight, that's 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 Evelyn 7502, Flaps 1, ski checked. And Flaps 2. Be checked. Okay, 126 today identified with 1801. 1801, Shit, heading should have been 220. Is it 376 Lima reduced 160 or not? Okay, back to the heading. That was too much configuring the airplane, setting your speed box, setting your uh, heading box. But here we go. Column 7502 reduced 200 knots. Question column 768. 768, column 768 reduced 200 knots. Okay, 1178, you can see the results. Can you name in 1286, uh, descend 4000 feet? 4000 feet, I'll say. Column 786, turn right, heading 120. Right, 120, okay, let's Man, that simulator really gives me a bit of uh, up and down drafts here. Making it not quite easy to maintain that altitude right now. I have to consciously pay some attention here when flying. Not like you wouldn't do that always anyway, but... Um, Uniform descent 4000 feet. Descent 4000 feet, this is 9650. Abelin 7502. Abelin 7502. Where did my route just go? What's going on with the distance to my final approach phase there? Okay, there's something wrong with the FMC position. Come on, B. Out of throttle. Something is wrong with that FMS. Well, ain't gonna bother with it now. Evelyn 7502, maintain 4000 to the glide, clear DLS 25 left. Evelyn 7502, maintain 4000 to the glide, clear DLS 25 left. Okay, localizer alive, warlock armed. 
We'll figure out whatever happened uh, later on. But something is wrong with the FMC there and the aircraft position. Wall of capture. I'm heading 245. Thank you very much. Uh, director, I believe in 7502. Go ahead. Uh, 7502, we just lost our RNAV capability in case of a missed approach request. I'm heading 5000. Cabellin uh, 7502, Roger, in case of missed approach, uh, climb 4, location, climb 4000 feet and maintain runway heading. Caroline 7502, in case of missed approach, Roma heading 4000 feet. Thank you. Okay, so um, I don't know what the airplane is doing, why that route completely disappeared, uh, and look at how it's stuck to like 1.1 mile towards Xanem, even though over here it shows about 10 miles. Don't know what it is, but at this stage in the approach, I can't be bothered by it, so that's why I just went back to raw data over here. Put the autopilot back in so that we have some time to focus on the issue. And, um... Arranged a very easy missed approach with air traffic control. To make our lives easy. Because now we don't have to bother with this FMC anymore. Regardless of what that fault is that it currently experiences, now it's not our problem anymore. Okay, glass slope alive. Yeah, Approach round. Abilene 7502, any chance we can make that 168? Any chance we can make that 168 knots? Abilene 7502, 160 would be better for the sequence, uh, so if able, uh, maintain 160 to format. Yeah, Roger, then we make it 160 and take the gear down now. Okay, gear down, uh, flap 15. Uh, and the landing checklist. Start switches, continuous, recall, check, speed break, arm green light, landing gear down, 3 green, auto brake, 3 set, holding in flaps. Last up capture, 4000 feet missed approach set. Okay, previous guy, three miles ahead. That's probably the reason he wants us exactly on the speed. Let's try something for a second here. What's the position indicating? One IRS here. Yeah, 
Just a single IRS Contact position. Contact one eight, just made it clinic, right? One eight, just made it. Only in some faster to Dubai. Okay, Shows the IRS positions at the same. What is your I don't know what it's uh, doing. Messed it's messed over. Not my problem. Berlin Tower, hello, Evelyn 7502. Okay. Just connect the autopilot once again. Okay, he wanted the airspeed until 4 miles, so that pretty much matches our standard flap extension schedule anyway. So at 4 miles, we'll start reduction to final approach. By the way, this is a really lovely view outside in uh, real life. See the other aircraft over there on the parallel approach? That's 25. Uh, 7502, it's a normal approach to a landing. Um, we just had an honor failure and coordinated uh, missed approach from a heading 4000 in case it becomes necessary. Okay, if it's 40. Check. Complete the landing checklist. Flaps, 40 40, green lights. Holding at the lights. Tower probably had a miscommunication there with the um, director. And I guess that's why he just asked us. Okay, I'll go non standard. Turn the lights on. Come to have left, dead land, Abilene 7502. Okay, landing lights on, landing checks complete. Break up. Thrust burst normal. 100 knots. Manual brakes. Auto brake disarm. And we passed 80. Come on, want to make that exit. Master caution engine. That's probably the reverse of lights. Oh, and it's gone. Okay. In that case, haven't seen it. Pretend I don't know it. Okay, 
to say you're nice to be from here again to have left. I left. Okay, so should be 117, I believe, but I'm not 100% sure on the frequency. But they do want you to call on your own after landing here. And hello, Evelyn 7502, one medicated. Evelyn 7502, hello, taxi right on Alpha, short of Victor 1. Alpha, short Victor 1, Evelyn 7502. Evelyn 7502, monitor 121.85 Monitor 121.85, Evelyn 7502 Okay, first right here, we'll monitor the frequency as soon as we're on the uh, straight line Alpha is the first of the two taxiways M5 straight, hello, taxi via Papa 2, Charlie, Hoj, the 3. Up to Charlie and full short vector 3, here on 5 straight. Yes, I'm fine. Lufthansa 6 Lima Yankee, Hoj, short of Echo. Hoj, short of Echo, Lufthansa 6 Lima Yankee. Is it 37 x Lima, taxi stand Charlie 06 via Victor 2 and Echo? Stand Charlie 06 via Victor Lufthansa 6 Lima Yankee, when clear of the EasyJet 8320 opposite direction, going into Echo, taxi to order 125 left, Mike 7 via Victor 2, Mike 7. Lufthansa 6 Lima Yankee, when clear traffic, EasyJet 8320, from opposite via. Uh, 52 and Mike 7 holding front two five. Okay, so we pretty much follow the easy jet. No. Interesting, we are on 1185. He probably trust coupled the frequencies. So that currently one controller handles both stations. Danke fürs Fliegen, KM768, hello, Taxi via Romeo Alpha, watch out of Victor 1. Romeo Alpha, watch out of Victor 1, KLM7. Evelyn 7502, Taxi stand Bravo 12 via Victor 1, Victor Charlie. Bravo 12, Victor 1, Victor Charlie, Evelyn 7502. Okay, so that is uh, quite an easy taxi. So basically, we are going um, left into Victor 1, that is going to be the next left. Then Victor 1, over here, onto Victor Charlie, onto Bravo 1 2. Lufthansa 6 Lima Yankee, contact tower, one one eight seven eight Major Flug. Okay. GSX, Bravo, 12, don't need to follow me, we know where we are going. So to the left over here, and we passed 3 minutes, shut down engine 2. What is Ryanair doing at the main terminal here? They certainly belong up to the north. At least as far as I know. Okay, start APU. Okay, and Bravo 12 is off to the right hand side then. Must be that one. Yeah, between the two 737s. Okay, let's take a small shortcut here. Lights off. And here we go, Bravo 12. Oops. 
after caution hydraulic associated with the engine shutdown. That guidance system working. One hundred seventy back. April had already two five for clearance. Contact one two one. Yeah, seems like it. One two one decimal six five also EX. Once again in feet. That is disgusting. We don't use feet here in Europe. Come on, two feet? Really? Ah, okay, well, then that's gonna be loud. And stop. That was worth it. Rainer 7 Whiskey Tango, you're on Apron, contact 129 at SML5. Two blue, one red, engine is dead. Yeah, that's how I'm going to call. Okay. Come on, Clickspot, what are you doing? Cabin crew, doors to manual and cross check. So, this is probably going to be the last flight of the day, so we are going to shut it down. And we have engines 1 and 2 below 20%. Here in Berlin they want a non-standard Squawk 1000 set, even when you're on standby. So let's do that. And then we want the chocks in, grandpa request, and guys, I'm gonna answer your um, comments in a few moments, as soon as we've wrapped the shutdown checklist. So, electrical. Sorry. Fuel pumps off, electrical, grandpa, fast melts off, window heat off, probe heat auto, any eyes off, electric hydraulic pumps off, voice recorder auto, air compacts off, engine bleeds on, APU bleed off, Exterior lights set, start switches off, auto brake off, speed brake down attend, flaps up and light, park and brake set, start levers cut off, weather radar off, transponder 2000 standby, sorry 1000 standby, CVRCB in, cockpit door unlocked, and that's the shutdown checklist complete. Okay, so... We are gonna use the jetway, and you may... Request the jetway. They're taking it slow over there. Okay, in the meantime, let's have a look into my landing report and see how I did. And yo, Frankfurt was actually very good this time. So, uh, full landing report. Give it to me, please. Here we go. So, on center line, just behind the um, aiming point, 145 feet a minute, I would call that a perfect landing. Not exactly on the aiming point, but at a very good rate and very close to it, right on center line. In my opinion, that is a perfect landing. That's all you can ask for. Okay, so you guys may please start the deboarding and the offloading. They are connecting, okay, very good. So, I'm um, sorry for not answering a lot of comments on the flight there, but um, let me take the opportunity to answer them now. Um, David, I purchased FS2 crew after your stream and I'm really pleased with the voice control. Are you going to do a stream with a voice control for us, please? Um, to be honest, I don't quite know that yet because 
I did try to learn some of the voice commands and then when I flew my last flight in real life because the FS2 crew commands are different from the um, commands my airline uses I got really confused so um, honestly I don't think I'm going to use voice control in FS2 crew anytime soon because the danger of messing something up in real life is just too big and of course real aviation always has some um, priority there so um, that's why I don't personally think that I will be using voice control anytime soon. I tried it, or I tried to learn it, but um, it had a negative effect on real life flying, which is an unacceptable, um, which is of course an unacceptable uh, situation. Then. Um, WS787, how did you become a pilot and how to become a pilot for free? Well, the answer is you don't become a pilot for free, sorry. Um, and how did I do it? Well, after my A-levels I started to work for Aerosoft here in flight simulation and uh, earned a little bit of money there and eventually I had enough that I could afford the training. Um, Connor, when you're simming, do you ever skip over anything you would do in real life or do you do everything in the sim as you do in real life so as to not accidentally miss something? Um, I try to do the flight simming as closely to real life as possible, but um, there are some things that I do skip occasionally, like the takeoff and landing calculations. I don't always do them in uh, flight simming, you know. Um, that is one of those things. Apart from that, I'm currently trying to think about what else there is. Um, but I mostly try to do the um, flight simming as close to real life as possible. Extreme, why is it that the um, VSD range always shows some um, half of what you've selected on the ND? Well, that is because the VSD is originally meant for a display that is um, twice as big, namely for the 787 and for the Max. And on the, on them, I do believe it um, matches the range. It honestly annoys me a little bit as well in real life. It honestly annoys me as well, but that is how Boeing designed it. I can't really tell you why, and I do think it is maybe not the best design decision, but I'm sure they have put some thoughts into it that I would otherwise not have um, come to my mind. Uh, Richard, can you please name the software you used to see the um, landing report? That was Sim Toolkit Pro. Really, really uh, favorite software of mine. Then, Flying Hazard, how come you're not using GSX for passenger services and do you prefer the MSFS mouse handling over the PMDG one? Um, how I'll, pr I'll split that one. So, how come I'm not using the GSX services? To be honest, I like the PMDG services much better. They are more realistic, they match the times better than GSX, and um, they just work a lot better, in my opinion. Of course, that is an opinion, and they are not visually as nice as GSX is, but if I'm totally honest with you, um, GSX has so many bugs. Like, you remember that live stream where I tried to boarding or deboarding and the passengers just flew up into the air? Honestly, I don't see the advantage of GSX at the moment. It's just too buggy. Then, do I prefer the uh, MSFS mouse handling over the PMDG one? If I'm totally honest with you, I never even tried the PMDG one. I got so used to the MSFS mouse handling already that I just don't see any reason to try the PMDG handling because the MSFS one works fine and never change a running system, right? NDG, I am planning to revisit the HJet with the latest update. Um, I saw that update and it does sound quite interesting. Now, if I'm going to revisit it over the next time, I can't tell you yet because, in my opinion, what's going to be most interesting is to see how the HJet is going to work with the aircraft and avionics update that will be out this month. Because, um, if I'm totally honest with you, they I'm sure they did a very good um, job in the HJet to bring that VNAV in, but we are going to get all that stuff as standard stuff anyway very soon. So, in my opinion, they did a very good job with it, I'm sure, but um, was it worth it? I don't know. Because the um, old G3000 that they have in the um, Honda Jet at the moment just lags so much behind all the updates that we got with the um, aircraft and avionics update. So. For sure, when the AAU is out, I am going to do that. 
but um, I don't know if I'm going to do it beforehand. And Flying Hazard, yeah, I do agree. I, I also wish GSX would have been redone from scratch instead of being ported from P3D. And most importantly, I do wish that GSX actually had gotten all those um, capabilities and that they didn't release it as like a pre-alpha version. Like, look at that aircraft pushing back there. Another guy that's going so much nose down. Um, that is the GSX pushback for sure. And um, a funny thing there. Umberto actually has to create a custom profile for every aircraft. Because otherwise GSX totally messes the pushback. When I'm using the 737-900 beta, it pushes the nose into the ground rather than lifting it. And um, that looks so incredibly ugly. Of course, that is because it's a beta, but you know, I would expect GSX to work with every aircraft out of the box. Like, at least don't s squeeze the nose into the ground. I mean, what's going on in that software? And Stefan, thank you very much. Uh, great stream. I always love seeing Berlin Airport in a stream with a real pilot. Thank you very much, my friend. That is uh, really appreciated. Now... Um, let me scroll up a little bit in the questions over there. Um, Yo, was Frankfurt as bad as last time, our taxi time? No, not at all. In fact, they were very, very good today. So, something I really have to say right now is that ATC today did an excellent job. There was hardly anything that I could have complained about. The only thing really was um, that they only gave us the slot when we requested startup. On departure from Berlin but even then that slot came forward almost immediately so um, very good job for ATC very good job today they really did well on this event and there is a question a little bit further up from Gerald um, why do you put a fix at 69 mile um, the reason for that was that um, we were cruising at 23,000 feet so if you take the 23, multiply that by 3, then you get 69. So that pretty much works as a reminder for our top of descent. So 3 times cruise altitude divided by 100 um, gives you roughly your top of descent. And that's what I used there. And then DG, I'm just gonna... Um, I'm just going to read that one out. So this is something Dan DG wrote here. I'd be more willing to deal with um, the GSX box if Umberto was more open to feedback, trying to be diplomatic with phrasing, quote end. Yeah, I know what you mean. I really know what you mean. And WS787, um, did you expect to have such numbers of views and subscribers? Honestly, never, ever. When I set my channel up, I thought like, I'm going to do a couple tutorial videos, they're going to get a couple thousand views, that's going to be it. And then I'm here, eight months later, 20,000 subscribers. That is totally amazing. And looking at the number of people who watched the live stream, like, I believe the peak has been around 230 people watching it at the same time. Honestly, that is something that I would never ever have expected, um, that the channel would become that popular. So I'm really, really thankful to you guys. Um, just for sticking around and watching what I'm doing here. Thank you so much for it. That is something I would never have expected. I really thought like I'm gonna do a couple of um, demonstrations of some non-normals, then the tutorial series and that's it. That's what I had in mind when I initially set the um, channel up. And then all of a sudden I sat there and like, what's that? 30,000 views on that uh, non-normal? Wow, totally incredible. Totally incredible. Never expected that. Then going a little bit further up in the question, um, Stefan, did you fly to Tegel? Um, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. Um, in real life, my airline flew to um, Schönefeld while Tegel was still open. We had the base in Tegel as well, but um, at least from my base where I'm uh, based, we flew to Schönefeld. 
and um, I never managed to get there as a passenger as well. So, unfortunately, I've never seen Tegel in action, but in the simulator I flew to Tegel a lot. I still remember 10, 12 years ago in school, when um, on Monday you would still have the Dusseldorf online day and the um, Berlin online day at the same day. Then, pretty much every Monday I flew um, Dusseldorf, Tegel and back on Watson. That was really, really cool. Something I always look forward to um, coming home from school in um, on Mondays. But yeah, good old times, 10 years back. <laughs> then Bootwin, um, what does the recall check do that you always do? Okay, um, I need to... I need to um, explain the entire master warning system of the 737 system for that. So let me do that. Basically, um, there are like two levels of warnings in the 737. Um, one of them, well, actually three levels, but one of them, of course, is the warnings, like the fire warning up here. That is action that, uh, that is stuff that needs immediate action from the crew. Then you have cautions. That is the um, amber stuff you have here. That is defined by EASA as um, stuff that will need, uh, stuff that does need attention from the crew and that will need subsequent action, but not immediate. So let's say, for example, in flight, a fuel pump low pressure light goes on. That is something that the crew needs to know and that they need to do something about, but it's not immediate. It isn't going to kill you, like an engine fire, for example, which would be one of the red lights. This, by the way, applies to pretty much any aircraft, um, because this is, re this is required by law. Anything red is a warning, and warnings require immediate attention and immediate action. Now, cautions, so anything amber, requires immediate attention, as in the crew has to know, but it does not require immediate action. However, subsequent action will be required. Then you also have white, not in the 737, but in other aircraft. Or in the Airbus, they used green rather than white. In the Boeings, they use white, in those that have an ICAS. Um, that is stuff that the pilots need to know, but subsequent action will not be required. For example, the notice about the seatbelt sign is white. Now, in the 737, there is another level of warnings. Um, and that is stuff that the pilot doesn't need to know immediately. And that is stuff that is not going to bring a caution up when it happens. So let's say, for example, right now our master caution panel is cancelled. And let's say we experienced a GPS failure. Or, yeah, let's stick with the GPS failure. Then um, we don't get any information about that. Let's go ahead and do that. Aircraft failures should be under navigation, I believe. Yeah, GPS left fail. Active, yes. Okay, you can see we get the white information here. GPS left invalid in white, but it doesn't trigger a master caution. However, let's quickly look at the overhead as well. We can see nothing triggered. But now let's press a recall. And now we see the GPS light is illuminated. Only when we pressed the recall, the, this light came up. And if we reset the master caution system, the light goes out again. That indicates that we have a redundant system, like we have two GPSs in the aircraft, and a single failure has occurred. However, the other system has automatically taken over. And that is why the master caution light does not come up until the recall button is pressed. And the aircraft has similar failure modes in the packs, for example. So um, if you have... Every pack has two controllers, and if one of the controllers fails and the other controller automatically takes over, you are not going to get any master caution from that or any light illuminating. However, if you do a recall, then the light is going to illuminate, and that is 
indicating to you that a single failure has occurred in a redundant system and the other system has automatically taken over. And if you then press the um, master caution reset button, the light is going to extinguish again. And that is the reason we do so many recalls in the 737. Because obviously we do want to know if these failures have happened, because we do want to advise our engineers, because um, even with such a failure happening, the aircraft flies perfectly fine, but you are not allowed to dispatch again on the ground without dealing with that failure. Of course, if you don't have engineering available, you are going to call maintenance control of your airline. They are going to decide what to do with it. And in case, for example, of a single GPS failure, they will put it on the hold item list so that um, the aircraft will be allowed to fly with it. The thing is entered as inoperative in the aircraft technical logbook. And then when you come um, to an engineering station next time, they are going to fix it. That is just an example. Um, for a, another example, just yesterday, I had an aircraft that had the TCAS inoperative. That was also something that um, they couldn't fix immediately. So the TCAS was put on the hold item list. And the um, lawmakers say that the airplane is allowed to fly for 10 days with the TCAS inoperative. Within 10 days, the airline has to fix it. And we've been on the like second or third day only. Um, spare parts were ordered already but still had to arrive so that engineering could put a new TCAS in so that's why we've been allowed to fly with the TCAS and operative all right so um, I think that explanation pretty much covered it so let me say thank you very much guys for um, joining today I really hope that you have enjoyed the live stream and if you did then do like comment and subscribe and um, let me just take the opportunity to um, raise voice about the new membership system that I have enabled on the channel. So if you really want to show your support, um, then you can do that by becoming a channel member. And um, there is stuff in there like early access to some new videos. Not all. I'm still releasing quite a lot of stuff um, straight away. But some new videos, like for example, we have an Arnav, um RMP visual approach to, to split over there or transatlantic flight in the citation longitude and in the um, first class membership you can even request me to do certain videos so if that is something that sounds interesting to you then do check it out but if that is something that is not interested to you then don't worry at all that is um, purely optional and uh, all my content is still going to be available for uh, free to you guys as well so, thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope that you have enjoyed today, and I'm really looking forward to see you all again on the next live stream, hopefully very soon. Until then, Happy New Year. Enjoy your evenings, your afternoons, your mornings, whatever it is where you currently are, and I see you around again, hopefully very soon.